Traveling from Hunter, Author, Battle Ring, Chapter 26 Red Eye Traits, Restrictions and Oaths, Ding, Congratulations to the host for getting a new member of the force, and getting a check-in reward once, may I ask the host to sign in, Ding, Congratulations to the host for getting the ability feedback from force member Kripika, the host has obtained the Red Eye Trait, after engraving the favor to Kripika. A system prompt sounded in Fisher's mind, as expected. Kripika's aptitude is higher than Mancha's. However, what is this fiery red-eyed trait? Fisher murmured inwardly, immersed in the red light group in the system space. Fisher quickly learned the information about the red-eyed trait. Fire red-eyed trait. With this trait, Fisher's eyes will not turn red, but it will make his own system into a trait system. And Kripika's characteristic is absolute time. Any system of N can exert 100% of its power. The fiery red-eyed trait that Fisher reported belongs to Kripika and so does his trait ability. In other words, Fisher has now obtained the qualifications for 100% cultivation of the five systems and as long as Fisher is willing, he can cultivate the various systems at any time, and it is 100% powerful and speaking of this, we have to mention N system, except for some special cases, like this one with Karipika, others have only one system attribute from birth. This system attribute is your main attribute, and only with this attribute can you cultivate 100% of its power, while other attributes can be cultivated through hard work but you cannot fully exert their power. The farther the system is from the exclusive system attribute, the lower the chance of its completion will be. For example, Fisher's Conjurer, the closest to the Conjurer is the Enhancer and Manipulator. These two systems, Fisher's cultivation success rate is 80%, while the farther away is the Transmuter and Emitter. The success rate of these two Fisher exercises will be lower, 60% and 40%. However, the cultivation success rate of the trait system is zero and one must be born with the trait system to be able to cultivate successfully. Fisher who now has the red eye trait is and who has inherited Kripika's trait ability, absolute time, and the other four systems that can cultivate 100% power. Good thing. With a chuckle in his heart, Fisher absorbed the red light into his body, and officially obtained the special ability of absolute time. Afterwards, Fisher glanced at Kripika who was looking at his favor list, and said silently, System, sign in. Ding. The sign in is successful. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the Restriction Oath Offset card, Karapaka's special version, as expected. The sign-in rewards of the faction members are exclusive to them. Before it was for Menchai, this time it's for Karapaka. However, this thing, Fisher narrowed his eyes slightly, confirming his previous guess. However, looking at the silver card that appeared in the system space, Fisher had new guess in his heart, and his thoughts wrapped up in the past. Can any degree of restriction and oath be cancelled? This is really a reward teller made for this guy Karapika. Karapika, even if he gets a favor, he probably won't be able to escape the oath and restriction against spiders. However, with this card, Karapika can make a more powerful oath, and the Nian Chi obtained in this way will be even stronger. Make the best use of everything, and let Karapika formulate stricter rules than the original book. After understanding the effects of the restriction and oath offset card, Fisher thought silently. Restriction oath offset card, literally, can offset the oath no matter what level it is. With such a good thing, Fisher absolutely, the oath made by Karapika in the original book is not enough to watch. If you want to make it, make a stronger oath and gain more powerful power, or, I can make Karapika grow up directly like Gan. A thought popped up in Fisher's mind. Forced growth. This is the oath made by Gan in the Ant chapter, to force his body to grow to its peak state, and Gan in the peak state directly punched Neferpatu, the personal guard of the Ant King, in seconds. Although Kripika's talent is somewhat different from Gun's, it's not too big. Even if he grows to the peak, his strength is not as good as Gun's, but it's not much worse. By doing so, Kripika can gain her own future powers. Thinking about it is a little heartbreaking. However, as soon as Fisher's thoughts came here, the system that had always been cold, salted fish, suddenly spoke. You're thinking of Peach's system? Fisher was a little surprised. The system didn't want to talk to you, and threw an explanation at you. Fisher, throw an explanation. This is very systematic. Although he was speechless about the strange behavior of the system, Fisher also received the so-called explanation from the system. Is forced growth a one-time oath, that is to say, it can only be used once, and then it will disappear. The restriction and oath offset card can only be used once. It seems a little uneconomical. We have to think of a more suitable restriction and oath. After receiving the system's explanation, Fisher also knew why the system said that. Thinking of this, Fisher pondered again. After a long time, Fisher finally thought of a good idea. Have you finally recovered? Fisher, after Fisher recovered, Karapika's voice came over, and Karapika was sitting on the sofa opposite Fisher, looking at him worriedly. Karapika, do you want to make a restriction oath? Fisher nodded slightly, and then asked lightly. Constraint oath? Karapika asked with question marks all over his face. Ah, restriction oath, a good thing that can allow you to quickly obtain a powerful Nianki cultivation base. I want to formulate. Chapter 27 Karapika who reached the sky in one step. 
Goodbye Hisoka. The rule that it can't cause harm to people is much stricter than it can only be used on Phantom Troop. However, it also gives Kurapika much more power than the original Oath. Now Kurapika's Nianchi cultivation is comparable to that of Dad Silver. Looking at Kurapika's back, Fisher murmured in a low voice. Restrictions and oaths, as long as you swear and follow the rules, you can gain great power. The original Kurapika was supposed to formulate a middle finger bondage chain that could only work on spiders. This limitation is too strong. However, there are stronger limiting rules than this. That is, you can't do anything to anyone, and once you do it, you will die. This rule can be said to completely restrain Kuripika. Because of this, the strength Kuripika gained is far more terrifying than the original Kuripika, and the energy in his body is now comparable to that of his father Silver, only inferior to him. You know, N was originally used for fighting, but Kuripika made the rule of not being able to fight with others. One can imagine how strict it is. Almost all the functions of N are restrained, which is almost the same as without N. If it is someone else, then basically you can lie down and wait to die. After all, no matter how strong N is, he can't fight others, and he can only wait to die when he encounters the enemy. But Kuripika with the offset card is different. Even with this extremely strict rule, as long as the offset card is used, Kuripika can still be used. This is the state of Kuripika right now. One step to the sky, just an oath is enough. And on this basis, Kuripika also reenacted the oath against Phantom Troop. It's really enviable, whether it's Menchai or Kuripika. Looking away. Fisher sighed slightly. Both Manchai and Kuripika have received strong support from the system. And it was something that made him very envious. Shaking his head slightly, Fisher turned and left, walking towards the room. In the following month, Fisher did not complete the system's sign-in tasks. For a month, Fisher stayed in Kyukalu Mountain. Apart from practicing himself, he taught Kilyu a various and skills. Fisher will not be like Yang Wu, just teach some basics and let the two figure it out by themselves. Fisher directly taught Kilyu and others all of N's skills including advanced skills. As for whether they learn or not, it has nothing to do with him. Anyway, the concept has been taught, and it is waiting for them to develop it themselves. And after staying in the Zoldyk family for a month, Fisher also set off to leave the dry mountain. Kilyu and the others also left. However, Kilyu and Gan are on the same path as Fisher, while Kuripika and Lirio are splitting into the other two paths. Lirio went back to his hometown, while Kuripika went to Yukexin City. After all, Hisoka had told him that the members of Phantom Troop would be going there on September 1st. So Kuripika went to find the way first. As for the Fisher 3, they went to the Sky Arena. Kiliwa wants to take Gun to the Sky Arena to participate in the competition, so that Gun can accumulate some fighting skills and experience. As for Fisher, he was invited to fight at the invitation of Hisoka. During the Hunter experiment before, Fisher agreed to Hisoka's invitation to fight in order to avoid Hisoka's entanglement, and went to the Sky Arena to fight with the Hunter Association one month later. This guy Hisoka is the owner of this guy arena, and he needs to declare if he wants to fight with him, but Fisher doesn't need it, because Fisher is also a landlord in this guy arena, just like Kiliwa, Fisher came here when he was young, and he was brought here by Silver to fight shortly after Fisher just learned him. it took half a year, Fisher is very happy he has become the host of the sky arena, the host of 235, and his roots are so deep that no one can shake him, Fisher can register at any time if he wants to fight Hisoka, and then tell Hisoka to accept the appointment. Taking the airship to the Sky Arena, Fisher left Gun and Kill you and went directly to the floors above 200 floors. As soon as he reached the 200th floor, Fisher went directly to the registration staff to register, and called Hisoka to let him accept the battle invitation. Quick fix, Fisher doesn't want to waste time here. Sure enough, Hisoka was already here waiting. Not long after receiving Fisher's call, he appeared at the registration office and directly accepted Fisher's invitation to fight. It's been one month and six days, and I thought you would miss the appointment. Standing in front of Fisher, Hisoka squinted his eyes and said slightly displeased. It's only a few days, you're so fussy, even if I don't come, there's nothing you can do. Facing Hisoka's displeasure, Fisher didn't get used to him at all, and said directly. Even if he doesn't come, Hisoka can't do anything about him. He really pissed him off, so he will deal with Hisoka directly, and at most he will find a new friend for his brother Illumai. Although this kind of friend is hard to find. Hey, hey, then let's start tomorrow. This battle, I can't bear it anymore and want to have a life and death battle with you. You are the opponent I am most looking forward to besides Kolo. See you tomorrow, Hisoka said excitedly, with that perverted look. His face was not only twitching, his hands were tightly hugging his body, twisting and twitching. This perverted move made the waiter at the registration desk back involuntarily a few steps, a disgusting look. Even Fisher was the same, taking a few steps back involuntarily. Hisoka is still the same Hisoka the one who is determined and perverted for a hundred years. See you tomorrow, I hope you can still be so perverted tomorrow. Fisher cast a disgusted glance at Hisoka, then left a sentence, and then rushed to his room on the 235th floor. This guy Hisoka is disgusting, if he stays here, 
Fisher is afraid that he will vomit, that would be indecent. Chapter 28 Before the game After playing this game with Ahsoka, go and complete the sign-in task. Back in the room, Fisher washed up and lay down on the bed, looking at the ceiling and muttering silently. For the time being, he has nothing to do except practice. The only thing that can be done is to set the system's check-in task. This task has been delayed for more than a month, and it is time to complete him. Get the Thunderbolt fruit, and your strength will be greatly improved. When he came to this world, Fisher's personality was peaceful, and he was a little non-controversial. Even the assassination was only because of the family business, and Fisher didn't want to take part in things that had nothing to do with him. Of course, if it's beneficial to him, Fisher doesn't mind intervening. In this world, there will be Chimerican incidents in the future, which can be said to have nothing to do with Fisher. However, who let Fisher have such a younger brother in this life? Fisher doesn't want to interfere with Killua's life, and in this case, Killua, who is with the protagonist Ken, will definitely be involved in the Chimera incident. At that time, even if it has nothing to do with it, it will be shot. Fisher's current strength is very strong among human beings, very strong, although he can't compare with the world's top five n. He is at least one of the first echelon. Even for a character like the division commander among Chimera ants, Fisher can easily kill him instantly, but if he is up against the army commander and Wang's personal guards, it's not enough. The gap between division commander and legion commander is too great. If he wants to keep his life safe in the Chimera ant chapter, Fisher needs stronger strength. And continuing to practice step by step for a year, Fisher can't guarantee that his strength can be compared with the army leader. Yes, compared with the legion commander, as for the ant king Maruim, this guy Fisher has absolutely no confidence to compare with him. There is no way, the Ant King is a full level booze coming to Novice Village to abuse food, and the strength of a single human being is far behind. Only bombing it with, artifact, has any chance of destroying him. Of course, giving Fisher a few more years would be comparable to the Ant King. However, Fisher is short of time, and there is not much time left for Fisher. Moreover, even without the Chimeric Ant incident, Fisher himself is very eager for strength. For Fisher, Improving strength is the number one priority in Fisher's heart. When he first traveled to this world, Fisher was very confused, and because of the confusion, he didn't know what to do to be a good Fisher and put all his energy on becoming stronger. After coming to this world for more than ten years, Fisher is almost always on the road of improving his strength. From the initial assassination training to the subsequent and training, Fisher has never stopped. On the way to becoming stronger, Fisher also gradually integrated himself into this world, making himself a member of Zoldyk's tribe and treating other people in Zoldyk as his own family. When something happened to his family, Fisher couldn't just sit back and watch. Speaking of which, Chimera ants are creatures from the Dark Continent, and the King of the Clan has such a powerful strength. However, even so, the strength of the Ant King is only a B-level creature in the Dark Continent. The Dark Continent is really terrifying. What is the highest level of creatures over there? A-level, S-level, or is there something above? His thoughts turned rapidly, and Fisher, who was still online about Chimera ants just now, turned from the task of signing into the Ant King in a second. Would you like to visit the Dark Continent when you become stronger in the future? Perhaps when my strength reaches a sufficient level, all the creatures over there will become the main resources to promote my strength. In addition to the system's sign-in rewards, Fisher's strength improvement is nothing more than two types. One is to practice and so that one's own chi cultivation can be strengthened, and one's own can be studied more deeply and tempered. The second is to rely on the grace of God. With the grace of God, as long as Fisher fights a large number of evenly matched enemies, he can quickly increase his strength. There are too few such existences in the human kingdom, and once Fisher's strength goes further, there will be even fewer of them. Moreover, even with such a small number of people, many of them are Shenlong who can't see the beginning and the end, and there are no people at all. Even if you can see it, it may not be able to compete with you. In the Dark Continent, such powerful existences should be everywhere, and they are natural training grounds. However, it is very troublesome to go to the Dark Continent. I remember that the Kajin Empire in the future seems to have held a large-scale exploration and colonization operation, and I might be able to hit Dryad at that time. That's the decision. Fisher muttered silently in his heart, and then made a decision. Slowly closing his eyes, Fisher was not going to replace his own water surface with cultivation as usual, and slowly entered his dream. No words all night! Exclamation mark. Early the next morning, Fisher washed up early and headed to the arena in the Sky Arena after having breakfast. The battle between the landlords, since Fisher and his Soka registered yesterday, the Sky Arena has already started to warm up in time. Even if the time is tight, the warm-up effect is very good. Early in the morning, the arena was already full of people. The entire arena was full of voices, and the audience was excited, whispering to each other, excitedly talking about the upcoming battle today. His Soka, the pervert, had already been waiting in the ring early. When Fisher came over, he just saw his Soka in the ring showing a perverted posture completely ignoring the surrounding audience. Here it is. 
the floor owner Fisher on the 235th floor has finally appeared. This battle between the landlords is finally about to start. Please wait and see. The host was keenly aware of Fisher's appearance, and was immediately extremely excited. The announcement came out, and the loud voice reverberated in the arena with the aid of the equipment. The cameraman of the broadcast also shifted the camera to Fisher in good time, and Fisher's figure appeared on the big screen. Immediately, the entire training ground immediately boiled up, and all the audience stood up, calling out Fisher's name loudly. Fisher, 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 Fisher? Am I that popular? What Fisher didn't know was that, as the youngest proprietor of this guy arena, Fisher had attracted much attention and was highly anticipated. In the previous few promotion battles, Fisher was completely crushed. But this time, Fisher's enemy is Hisoka. Hisoka's strength is also very strong, completely different from the landlord who Fisher played against before, the reason why the audience is very excited and looking forward to the fight between the two. The audience wanted to see a fierce battle between dragons and tigers. Chapter 29, The Lightning Cage. It's finally here. The audience at the scene has been waiting for a long time. Sarah, let's start. Hisoka, after seeing Fisher appearing, was even more excited, and his calm face suddenly changed dramatically. His complexion became extremely ferocious, like an evil ghost. However, not only did this change not scare the audience, but they became more excited, and the cheers became louder. As soon as the words fell, Hisoka didn't wait for Fisher's reaction and regardless of whether the referee announced the start of the battle, he crossed his hands, and several poker cards appeared at the fingertips, and quickly fired towards Fisher, and his figure followed. Hisoka's poker attack is fast, but in Fisher's eyes, it is as slow as a tortoise, as if in slow motion. Fisher easily dodged the poker attack, and then his figure flashed, followed by Hisoka they collided head on. The arms of the two collided violently, and there was no explosion, but there was a violent, deafening roar. This kind of situation made the audience who were looking forward to this battle excited and shouted loudly at the top of their lungs. The host also played by ear and commented loudly on the battle between the two, while the referee on the ring had already emergency avoidance. Hisoka quickly exited the ring and entered the passage. After throwing out the playing cards and shouting start hastily, I've caught you. On the battlefield, Hisoka, who collided with Fisher's arm, changed from his previous evil spirit appearance. With a calm expression and a smile in the corner of his eyes, he looked at Fisher and said with a smile, Catch me, are you talking about this disgusting thing on your arm? Fisher smiled lightly when he heard this, with strong disdain in his laughter. Fisher is very clear about Hisoka's abilities. Stretchable love, this guy isn't can turn into a chewing gum shape and has a very strong sticky force. Once it is glued, it will be very troublesome and many movements will be restricted. Moreover, this guy also likes to use win battle to hide than he activated, unless he uses condensate all the time during the battle so that he can notice this. However, in the ever-changing battle situation, not everyone will always use Ning, and only use it when they feel something is wrong, so Hisoka has repeatedly succeeded in battle. And Fisher, who knows Hisoka's fighting habits, has long been on guard against Hisoka's move. Hearing this, Hisoka was taken aback for a moment, and then looked at Fisher's arm. With this look, Hisoka knew why Fisher said that. Not only himself, but Fisher also used it. He thought that there was a small electric arc attached to Fisher's arm stuck by his knee at this moment. Even if he turned on the condensation, it would be difficult to notice this electric arc. His own stretching love was completely blocked by these tiny arcs, not sticking to Fisher's arm at all. This discovery made Hisoka a little surprised, but he was not annoyed, and said with a light smile, It seems that you have investigated my ability very clearly. It's the most basic common sense to gather intelligence about the enemy before a battle. Fisher replied flatly, That's right. But you don't think I have only this kind of means. Hisoka was not surprised when he heard this, and continued with a smile. Boka, that's right, your old trick. Hearing this, Fisher didn't panic at all, but directly punctured Hisoka's arrangement. Hisoka was taken aback by these words. At the beginning of the battle, he launched his poker card as a whole card. This is his usual trick. Moreover, N, who was connected to the poker card, was transferred to his feet and connected from the ground. Yes, I didn't expect Fisher to even discover this. But just when Hisoka was in a daze again, Fisher's attack was already reactionary. The lightning all over his body has spread rapidly around Fisher and Hisoka, forming a huge cage with a radius of about 15 meters, and the two of them are directly trapped in the lightning cage. If you want to rush out of the lightning cage, you will definitely be seriously injured. It is precisely because of this trick that Fisher wastes his tongue in a spat with Hisoka. Otherwise, with Fisher's character, it is impossible to waste saliva in battle. Are you going to limit the battlefield? Noticing this, Hisoka was stunned for a moment, then bent his legs jumped back quickly, and distanced himself from Fisher, then glanced at the thunder and lightning around him. The corner of his mouth curled up, he smiled evilly and said. However, this time Fisher has no intention of talking to Hisoka. The lightning on Fisher's body kept surging, rushing towards the lightning cage from all directions, and the color of the lightning cage became darker visible to the naked eye, gradually changing from the light blue at the beginning to the faint blue, and finally turned into purple. 
As for Hisoka, looking at this scene, he didn't mean to stop him at all. Instead, he showed a surprised look, and just watched Fisher strengthen the lightning gauge. That's right, the color change of the lightning represents the stronger attribute of Fisher's thunder cage. If the previous lightning cage would cause serious injuries if forced to break through, the current lightning cage is completely impossible to break through. At least with Hisoka's destructive power, it can't be broken. Once Hisoka really chooses to break through the lightning cage, he will definitely peel off several layers of skin. It seems that I'm really going to have a showdown here, it's okay. Faced with this situation, Hisoka looked away, looked at Fisher, licked his lips and said with a smile, Sa, let's start, Fisher said indifferently, his expression unchanged. The next moment, Fisher flashed and rushed towards Hisoka. Hisoka also shrank his pupils, and shouted excitedly, his face became ferocious again laughing like a ghost and rushing towards Fisher. Hisoka, who has always been graceful in battle, couldn't stop facing a ripe red apple like Fisher. Outside the thunder cage, the audience in the auditorium became more and more ebullient, and the shouts resounded throughout the arena and spread to the outside through various passages, making the people outside couldn't help but exclaim and look sideways frequently. Chapter 30 Downwind Using the ability of Ju instead of hiding when fighting with me, aren't you afraid of doom? Continuously firing the poker cards in his hand, Hisoka launched an attack on Fisher in a wrestling manner, teasing while attacking. The absolute thing is not easy to use. Once the enemy notices it, the enemy's attack will definitely eat you up. Because in the absolute situation, a person's defense is almost reduced to the extreme, almost zero. This is the same with Hisoka just now, but Hisoka thinks that his adaptability can instantly relieve him of the absolute state, and let his thoughts fill his whole body again. Concealment is different in comparison. Although it is still a trick used for concealment, its own defense still exists. It's the same with you. Facing Hisoka's ridicule, Fisher said lightly. If Fisher really thought that Hisoka was in an absolute state and took the opportunity to attack, it would be a big mistake. Because a guy like Hisoka, who has experienced many battles, can definitely change his state in an instant and restore his defense power again. This is why Fisher didn't take the opportunity to attack Hisoka just now. However, the battle is changing rapidly, and if Hisoka uses absolute often like this, Fisher can also find opportunities to attack in the battle things like ch can only be used against novices, because most novices can't use condensation, such as Hua Xi Dulang, and there will be a considerable degree of danger when dealing with masters. The pervert Hisoka just loves dangerous situations like this. Thinking of this, Fisher, entwined with lightning, appeared in front of Hisoka again, and punched Hisoka's face. Boom! Exclamation mark. Blocking Fisher's attack with both hands, Hisoka retreated towards the edge of the lightning cage, and barely stopped on the edge almost being attacked by the lightning gauge. As soon as he stopped, Hisoka's playing cards came to Fisher. Laugh, crackling, thunder and lightning flashed, and the playing cards were instantly reduced to ashes. And Hisoka's figure also came to Fisher again, holding a sharp poker and swiping towards Fisher's neck. The battle between the two has completely entered the melee combat stage from a wandering fight. Perhaps it was because Fisher didn't like words when fighting. Hisoka, who originally liked to use words to shake the opponent's mood in battle, was completely unable to use his specialty this time. The battle between the two of them only had the sound of violent collisions, and there was very little communication. Most of the time only Hisoka was talking and Fisher was silent. In just a few tens of seconds, both of them were attacked by the other party. It stands to reason that both of them had injuries of varying degrees. But no, only Hisoka was injured. There are very obvious scars on Hisoka's face and arms at this time, and there is a lot of blood at the corner of his mouth. Perhaps it was because they both knew each other's strength so the two of them didn't test the enemy's strength anymore. They exhausted all their strength from the beginning of the close combat. No, only Hisoka used his full strength. As for Fisher, Fisher only used the power of Conjurer. As for Hisoka, Hisoka is very passive in this close combat. The battlefield that stretchable love is best at is in a spacious place, and a spacious battlefield allows stretchable love to play to its heart's content. But now, the battlefield between the two has been limited by Fisher to a space of only 15 meters. This situation inherently limits Hisoka's and by more than half and Hisoka's and cannot exert its own power. Moreover, the way of using Yuto is not good, Fisher's speed is too fast, and he can approach his side every time. Troublesome, my ability is limited, and I can only fight with basic and skills. Hisoka thought while attacking Fisher. Hisoka was no fool, and the moment he emerged from Fisher's lightning cage, Hisoka knew he was at a disadvantage. But this is also a helpless thing, the battle is changing rapidly. He also didn't expect that Fisher actually had this ability and actually developed another thunder cage. As for knowing that the appearance of the lightning cage will restrict him from breaking out of the lightning cage before it poses a threat to himself, it is because Hisoka knows very well that Fisher cannot let himself succeed. Since Fisher has used this ability, it means that Fisher has made up his mind to limit himself and the battlefield here. And, there's more trouble than that. Fisher has been using condensate in the battle, 
so that he can't get any chance to use his unique skill, that is, to hide his and stretching and free love for battle layout. I use Zha to activate the flexible and flexible love. I just activated it one second, and the next second Fisher fired a lightning bolt, directly blasting away the I had arranged, which was impossible. A concubine can't do it. However, when fighting against a master like Fisher, using absolute still has a very high risk. Once or twice is fine, if there are too many times, if Fisher seizes the opportunity, even if his body is strong and he has no mind to defend, he will definitely be seriously injured when facing the mind attack of Fisher, even a master of them. Moreover, what's even more troublesome is that Illumai's younger brother has a very firm mind. My words can't affect him at all. We can only rely on his cultivation to decide the winner. This is what makes Hisoka even more troublesome. In previous battles, Hisoka was able to use words to give the enemy some psychological hints, influence the enemy's judgment, and so on. Once the opponent's mind is affected by his own words, then he will there are a lot of negative emotions, and the more common ones are anger and loss of reason. But in the face of Fisher, his language intervention ability can't work at all. Because Fisher didn't communicate with him at all after the melee combat started, and just kept attacking. Moreover, this guy Fisher is not only fast, but also has terrifying attack power. His Neon Chi defense can't defend against all attacks, so that he has been hit by several moves not long after the melee combat started. If you continue like this, your situation will be very bad. This guy Hisoka was forced to such a point, he is really a scary kid. And when Hisoka was feeling tricky about this battle, in the auditorium, in a passageway, a man in training clothes, the girl with the pink high ponytail was leaning against the wall and watching the battlefield quietly, and was surprised to see Hisoka being at a disadvantage on the battlefield. This girl is none other than Michi, one of the members of Phantom Troop. Michi came here a month ago. He originally came to inform Hisoka Krillo of the group leader's gathering order. Later, he heard Hisoka say that he would have a battle in a month, so he stayed here on purpose. He wanted to see Hisoka take over. Down the fight, I didn't expect that I would really gain something by staying here this time. Seeing such a battle was not in vain for her to stay here for a month. No, it should be said that seeing Hisoka deflated, this situation is really not bad. She's so happy to see this happening that she even wants to applaud Fisher. After all, Hisoka is really annoying to her. Perverts are the public enemy of women. Chapter 31, Absolute Time. But when Machi was slandering Hisoka, there was a change in the ring at this time. Hisoka, who was only slightly downwind was thrown flying by Fisher's punch without any warning, and his whole body was thrown into the water on the ground. If Hisoka hadn't stopped his tumbling body in time, Hisoka would have hit the lightning cage directly. Seeing this scene, the entire arena suddenly boiled up, and the audience's cheers flooded the entire arena with high excitement. And on the ring, in the thunder cage, Hisoka knelt on one knee, showing shock. Enhancer, with one hand drooping, Hisoka read with a dull expression. That's right, by drooping this hand, Hisoka's left hand has been completely useless. Scrapped by Fisher's attack just now. As for why Hisoka has such a sluggish look, it is naturally because of the enhancer in his mouth. The attack just now Hisoka knew very well that it was not Conjurer's Chi, not Fisher's Conjurer's Neon Kick, but the Neon Kick exclusive to the enhancer. And he was attacked by the enhancer's Neon Kick on Fisher just now. Enhancer is the system with the most powerful attack power among the five systems. Under the same mind energy output, no system is more powerful than Enhancer. And just now he was unprepared to let Fisher's Enhancer mind attack, which directly caused one of his arms to be crippled. If it's just this, it's nothing. It wouldn't make Hisoka show such a surprised expression. The reason for this is entirely because of the difference in the mind system. Hisoka is pretty sure that Fisher's N system is Conjurer. It's not that it's impossible for Conjurer to cultivate such a level of lightning. However, what Fisher used just now was an enhancer, and it was a 100% cultivated enhancer. He also practiced the enhancer, but it was impossible for the conjurers and to achieve the kind of power that attacked him just now. The kind of enhancer thought energy that attacked me just now was 100% cultivated, and its power is also 100% enhancer. Can a person cultivate the mind energy of the two systems to 100%? This is simply impossible. No, there is another possibility. This kid is a trait type. As soon as he denied it, an idea appeared in his soaker's mind which directly overturned the previous denial. Are you surprised? Fisher, who had been silent since the beginning of the real battle, finally spoke at this time, and said to Hisoka who was showing astonishment. You're from the trait department, right? Hisoka stood up slowly, and instead of answering, asked a rhetorical question. Ah, traits, Fisher said lightly, walking towards Hisoka as he spoke. His body was surging with vigor, and the thunder and lightning cage kept giving up ripples under this aura, and the powerful aura swept the entire arena. This breath is similar to you Vogan, as Fisher's breath vented, it spread to the entire arena and to the auditorium. In the passageway of the auditorium, Machi frowned. She could feel that the aura Fisher released now was very different from the aura she had released before, and it was very similar to the aura she released from the Vogan battle before. 
It was a ferocious and domineering breath, the breath of ferocious beasts. Unexpectedly, Hisoka's hand was crippled by Fisher. It can be seen that Hisoka's one hand can no longer continue to fight. Let's wait and see what direction the next battle will develop. The host's voice sounded in the arena again at this time. At this time, the referee under the ring only dared to judge the battle situation in the audience, and Fisher scored two points. It really surprised me. I didn't expect you to have this ability. Standing up unsteadily, Hisoka no longer had the abnormal smile before and his expression was calm and solemn. The current Hisoka is not at all as relaxed and freehand as when fighting Huashid Oro in the original book. Even if his hands were broken, he still defeated Huashid Oro calmly. Now Hisoka is facing a master like Fisher who can cripple one hand of him. Who can make a full shot, not a half-baked guy like Oro Huashi. So Hisoka couldn't show that look at all. He was already at a disadvantage in the battle just now, and this time he was directly crippled by Fisher, which made Hisoka's situation worse, adding fuel to the fire and the situation became even more difficult. You're still surprised, Fisher responded lightly, and then his figure flashed, and he flashed towards Hisoka again. At the same time, while flashing past, the lightning on Fisher's body shot up into the sky, splitting towards several completely irrelevant places behind him. Snapped! Exclamation mark! Snapped! Exclamation mark! Snapped! Exclamation mark! A series of detonation sounds followed. Seeing this, Hisoka, who was about to meet Fisher's attack, unconsciously twitched the corners of his eyes. Originally, he thought that since he was injured so badly and the situation was so unfavorable, Fisher should relax a bit. So he took the opportunity to introduce the stretchable love to the ground, and then led it to the blind spot behind Fisher, wanting to be a surprise soldier, but unexpectedly Fisher discovered it all at once, without any relaxation at all, without giving him any chance. What a troublesome opponent. Sighing slightly in his heart, Hisoka could only droop his left hand, and fought with Fisher again. The loss of a hand made Hisoka's situation even worse. Fisher's attack was pressing harder and harder. He could cope with it with two hands, but now with only one hand left, it became more difficult to resist Fisher's attack. From time to time, he would get punched by Fisher a few times, even though he had protected the Nianchi at the attacked place. Under the attack of the Enhancer's Nianchi, his Kunjura Nianchi defense still suffered a lot of damage. Speaking of the Enhancer's attack, Hisoka had to call Fisher a monster inwardly. This guy Fisher has two things in one mind. The conversion of the two systems of Enhancer Kundra is completely seamless. No, it should be said that there is no conversion at all. After all, the lightning cage has always existed, and there is no sign of collapse. Fisher not only uses the Enhancer's fist to attack himself, but also uses the Kundra's lightning to destroy the stretchable love he used. He doesn't give his any room to use, so he can only feel aggrieved use fists to attack. The stretchable love is restricted and locked by lightning, and the frivolous illusion is also stared at by Fisher's condensation. There is no chance and the left hand is abolished by Fisher, and at the same time, the fist of the Enhancer is constantly on the body. The beating made his injuries worse and worse, and there were more and more bruises. If he was only slightly at a disadvantage before, he is completely at a disadvantage now. Hisoka has been completely suppressed, and there is no chance of a comeback. The space is limited, and the Kunjura and the Enhancer are fighting hand to hand, and they are still opponents with a higher level of cultivation than themselves. This battle can be said to have come to an end. As time goes by, if Hisoka does not concede defeat, he will only be seriously injured by Fisher and the winner will be decided. Chapter 32 Calculations Hisoka had been calculated by Fisher from the beginning of this battle. Was plotted to death by Fisher. This is also the result of intelligence inequality. Fisher knows Hisoka very well, knows Hisoka's fighting style, his usual tricks, and knows Hisoka's n. But Hisoka's understanding of Fisher is only that Fisher is a Kundra Thunder, and the rest is unknown. And Fisher, who knew Hisoka's information, led Hisoka into the trap he had prepared for him from the very beginning. Knowing that Hisoka likes to rely on his own wisdom to analyze the opponent's character and ability during battle, and likes to communicate with the opponent and use words to influence the opponent's state of mind, Fisher, who has always disliked talking in battle, walked down the steps, communicate with him to distract him, prepare the chi needed for the thunder cage and then set the thunder cage on the ring when it is completely unstoppable, thus limiting Hisoka's stretching and free love here in peace space. At the same time, Fisher also used condensation throughout the battle, always guarding against Hisoka's usual tricks and frivolous illusions. Using condensation throughout the battle is only possible for someone like Fisher who has a very strong control ability. Others wouldn't do it even if they could, because it's too exhausting. In other words, Fisher has a tenfold increase and it takes decades to practice and skills to have this kind of concentration. It is really difficult for others to maintain a condensed state throughout the battle. The lightning cage forced Hisoka's stretchable love ability to be greatly reduced, unable to exert its maximum effect. At the same time, he was stared at by Fisher. Whenever he had a tendency to use it, he would be bombarded by Fisher's lightning, forcing Hisoka to follow himself. Engage in melee combat, 
and then rely on the strong advantage of Nianki cultivation base to engage in melee combat with Hisoka, causing Hisoka to be continuously injured, but I am not. In hand-to-hand -hand combat, the huge advantage of Nianchi cultivation comes out in mental hand-to-hand -hand combat, fist-to-body combat, showing strength is the key, and showing strength and potential strength can be said to be linked. And people will increase the upper limit of their manifest energy while increasing their potential energy. Fisher is this kind of n person while improving his potential energy. He also cultivates his manifest energy, so that his manifest energy will become stronger with the increase of his potential energy. And people who show strong aura are often able to release a huge amount of aura to protect themselves, making their defenses extremely powerful. On the other hand, the Nian Chi that can be used by a person with a weak appearance to attack cannot break through the Nian Chi defense of a person who appears to have a strong aura. Fisher has a tenfold increase, and it will naturally affect the manifestation of energy while practicing. That is to say, Fisher's manifestation of energy has been cultivated for 50 years. Fisher's cultivation aptitude is not weaker than Hisoka's, and in this case completely surpasses Hisoka. That's how Hisoka has all the injuries and Fisher has none. Because Fisher's Nian Chi cultivation base is too strong. His potential energy is too strong, and his manifest energy is much stronger than Hisoka's, so Fisher is not stingy at all in terms of Nian Chi defense, and the defensive Nian Chi he released is also stronger than Hisoka's. Speaking of this, Fisher has to complain that Guy Kim Freaks is a pervert among perverts, and he has already reached the top 5 in players in the world in his 30s. And then, with the passage of time, Hisoka's injuries became more and more, accumulating, which has gradually affected Hisoka's mental state. Changed. When Hisoka's mind changed, Fisher directly switched the Nian Chi attribute, and used a 100% powerful enhancer attack, directly hitting Hisoka by surprise, and crippling one of Hisoka's arms. As for why he didn't use the enhancer's Nian Chi to confront Hisoka Hodon at the beginning, it was because Fisher knew Hisoka. Although this guy's personality is perverted, he has a fierce tiger in his heart, and he has absolute reason when fighting. Once Fisher uses the enhancer to fight, Hisoka will notice it immediately. When fighting against scum like Duang Huashi, Hisoka didn't panic at all even if he lost both arms, but facing an opponent of Fisher's level, new injuries were constantly added to his body, but the opponent didn't without injury. Even with Hisoka's level of sanity, there will be flaws, and this flaw is what Fisher wants. Only when Hisoka's sanity changes, can the enhancer attack achieve the most powerful effect. With Hisoka's left hand abolished, the battle collapsed directly, and Hisoka, who was originally at a disadvantage, has completely lost the possibility of a comeback. The battle is over. In the passageway of the auditorium, watching the situation on the ring, Machi said lightly, then turned and left here. Like Machi said, the match could have been declared over the moment Hisoka's hand was crippled. Hisoka did not surrender. With his left hand disabled, Hisoka barely held on for half an hour and was tied up by Fisher with lightning, unable to move. The game officially came to an end. Hey hey hey, I really misjudged. You are not a green apple that is about to ripen, but a red apple that is already ripe. I'm the one who admits failure this time. Being tied up by Fisher, Hisoka didn't panic at all, and still declared his failure with a smile in that perverted tone. Okay, hit me too, don't bester me in the future or I won't show mercy. Facing Hisoka, Fisher warned lightly. I know, I know, I won't pester you anymore. However, when I'm sure, I will challenge you again. Hisoka replied with a smile. Fisher's eyelids twitched. Didn't you just take off your pants and fart? What else do you guarantee? When are you sure? It's not up to you, that is to say, you will challenge me again at any time. Fisher didn't care, though. Next time Hisoka comes to fight with him again, then he will kill him directly, and will not be merciful like today. Referee. The verdict is not yet announced. Immediately, Fisher looked at the referee outside the ring who hadn't recovered, and shouted loudly. Oh, oh, the game is over. The winner is Fisher. Hearing Fisher's voice, the referee came back to his senses at this time, and quickly announced. Following the referee's order, the entire arena suddenly boiled again, and cheers resounded through the sky. Chapter 33 Warning, Kill You As Guidance Request Looking at Hisoka, who was bound by the lightning and floating on the ring, Fisher also moved his mind to remove the lightning that bound Hisoka, and Hisoka fell to the ground directly. It's really merciless. Hisoka, who fell on the broken ring, looked at the dazzling ceiling and said with a smile. He can't move at all now, the injuries on his body are too serious, and he can't even stand up. Do you need treatment? Fisher, who was about to leave, heard Hisoka's words, turned his head, looked at Hisoka, and then asked with a dazed look. Healing? You still have healing? Hisoka was a little surprised when he heard this. 200 million ring nuns to bring you back to normal. Fisher didn't answer, but offered a price. Ah, then help me heal. Fisher didn't answer, and Hisoka was not surprised, and asked with a smile. When Fisher heard this, he didn't speak, and with a wave of his hand, an emerald green light fell on Hisoka's body, and the thoughts flowed out continuously, and Hisoka's injuries were visible to the naked eye. 
This scene surprised the ambulance personnel who had just arrived here with a stretcher. Soon, Hisoka's injury recovered as before. Hisoka also stood up, twisting his arms and moving. This is my account number. Send the money later. Fisher asked the staff for a pen and paper, wrote his account number to Hisoka, and asked Hisoka to send the money. This kind of healing ability, um, is really good. You have lost 200 million monks. Hisoka reached out to take the note, looked at the string of numbers on the note, and said with a smile, recovering as before, literally. The injuries of the body completely disappeared, except that the mind energy did not recover, everything else recovered. With such terrifying healing ability, Hisoka felt that the price Fisher charged him for 200 million monks was a big loss. For my own injury, if there is no treatment, it will take at least three months with ordinary treatment methods, and the cost of money will be at least one billion or more. After finishing speaking, Hisoka's eyes fell on Fisher, and his eyes flickered slightly. What, want to fight again? I said. If you disturb me again, I will kill you mercilessly. Noticing Hisoka's gaze, Fisher also looked over, and said flatly, with a flat tone, but full of murderous intent. The entire shattered ring the room was like a world of ice and snow, which made several ambulance workers shiver. Yeah, how could that be? I'm not like you, I don't have much energy in my body now. Hisoka said with his face unchanged when he heard the words, waving his hands. Ah, yes, then see you by fate. Um, no, it's better not to see you, you are too perverted. I don't really want to see you. Seeing this, Fisher nodded slightly, then turned and left, waving goodbye as he walked. Such words really make me sad. Upon hearing this, Hisoka put the note in his hand to his mouth to cover half of his face. His eyes flickered, and said sadly, That look just now, although very plain, but it contains endless killing intent. I have no doubt that once I say I want to continue fighting, that kid will kill me on the spot. This battle, I fell into this kid's calculation from the very beginning. Looking at Fisher's back, Hisoka was expressionless but his heart was turbulent. When he said that sentence just now, he clearly felt that his whole body was locked by an extremely terrifying killing intent. As long as he dared to continue talking, Hisoka had no doubt that Fisher would send him the most powerful thunderbolt on the spot, killing him in this ring. He doesn't have much Nian Chi to use now, but the Nian Chi on Fisher's body is still majestic. Once Fisher really attacks him, he is absolutely unstoppable and will be chopped into coke. It's really scary, Alumai's younger brother. With sarcastic words in his mouth, Hisoka also left the ring entered the player channel and left here. On the other side, Fisher saw two figures shortly after entering the player tunnel. It's amazing, bro. The battle between the two of you is so fierce. As soon as he saw Fisher coming in, Kiliua ran over excitedly and said excitedly, Gun, who was behind him, also ran over, also showing excitement. After coming to the Sky Arena and separating from Fisher, the two reached the 200th floor relying on their own strength. Because there was no obstruction from Hisoka, the two entered the 200th floor smoothly. After arriving at the 200th floor, the two heard the news that Fisher was going to fight Hisoka. Naturally, they would not miss it and bought tickets to watch the battle. The battle between Fisher and Hisoka opened their eyes and benefited a lot. The two of them just came into contact with N. They never imagined that N's battle could be so fierce, which made them very yearning for N. Longing, longing for such a fierce battle in the future. Cultivate well, you can do it to a certain level. Fisher smiled faintly, and said to Kiliua. Kiliua's future path is to use thunder and lightning like himself. When Kiliua's Nian Chi cultivation level rises, Kiliua can also do the battle he just fought. Yeah, yes, bro, I'm also developing Raiden's n, can you guide me? Kiliua nodded repeatedly, and then asked Fisher. Well, guide? Okay. Hearing Kiliua's request, Fisher was slightly taken aback, then agreed after a moment of thought. Originally, I wanted to complete the sign-in task after I finished fighting with Hisoka. But since Kiliua asked me, let's postpone this for a while. Great, thank you brother. Hearing Fisher's promise, Kiliua thanked excitedly. Um, by the way, brother. Can you also guide Gun? When excited, Kiliua suddenly thought of something, and asked again with some embarrassment. Guide him? Fisher heard this, his eyes shifted to Gun behind Kiliua, and he frowned slightly. Chapter 34 The Reason Fisher Hates Gun Hey, brother, why do you hate Gun? In the training ground on the 235th floor, Kiliua glanced at Gun who was meditating not far away, raising his mind, and turned to ask Fisher in doubt. As soon as Kiliua's words came out, although Gun, who had been meditating not far away, didn't look over. His ears were raised, as if he was eavesdropping. For the things that Kiliua is curious about, Gun is also very curious. As a party, Gun is more concerned about his own affairs than Kiliua. Enhancer's personality is straightforward, which is not a shortcoming, but I don't like it because they don't have self-knowledge and like to act recklessly. It's fine if you're alone, but if you have a companion, this kind of personality can easily implicate your companion. Also, J freaks, this guy is sometimes too mad and Fisher replied flatly not afraid of Gun hearing. These words made Kiliua slightly stunned, but at the same time very puzzled. Gun's character is straightforward, lively and cheerful, 
He knows this, and he is also attracted by Gan's character, so he became friends with Gan, but he is very puzzled by the lack of self-knowledge and reckless behavior. At the same time, he was completely confused about the heart of the Virgin Mary. Without self-knowledge, this has been confirmed in the final experiment of the Hunter Association. Don't admit defeat if you can't beat it, and don't be afraid of being killed by Hanzo. This is not self-knowledge. It means that Hanzo has a good personality, otherwise this guy would have been disabled long ago, and he doesn't want to think about what will happen to his relatives after he dies. I won't say more about acting recklessly and the heart of the Virgin is too much. Since you regard him as a friend, you will experience it in the future. At that time you will know what is reckless, what is the excess of the heart of the Virgin. J Freaks is not pedantic and most of the time he will not be merciful when facing the enemy, leaving disasters for himself, but sometimes he will suddenly explode the Virgin Mary, completely like a time bomb. For example, in the chapter on ants, he was very decisive when dealing with ant soldiers, but before that, he was very confused when dealing with Kilyu and Bomber in Island of Greed. What the hell is it to heal the enemy if you don't heal your own people? A complete Madonna whore. After finishing speaking, Fisher stopped talking and continued to teach Kilua his own experience in cultivating lightning. Kilua didn't ask again, and listened attentively, as Fagan not far away. After listening to Fisher's words, this guy seemed very dazed, at a loss, and couldn't concentrate on his practice for a while, and his mind was distracted. Soon, several hours passed, and Fisher left here. After Fisher left, Kilua flashed Agan's side immediately. You heard what brother said just now, right? What do you think? Sitting next to Gun, Kilua said, ha ha. Brother Fisher seems to know me very well. Gun scratched his head and said with a dry smile. Indeed, brother seems to know you very well, and he is even sure that you will have a heart attack in the future. Kill you and nodded in agreement. However, there is one sentence in what my brother said just now, which I quite agree with. Gun, you do sometimes have no self-awareness, and you like to act recklessly without thinking about the consequences. As for the fight between you and Hanzo, I was very worried and my heart almost jumped out. I couldn't help but want to intervene. You are not afraid that Hanzo will destroy you but you should also consider whether your Aunt Mito can accept such a thing. What do you think Aunt Mito will think once she finds out that she sent you out to participate in the Hunter experiment and then returned as a disabled person? I can imagine with a high probability that Aunt Mito will definitely be very painful, blame herself, and think that she let you out to make you look like that. Kilua said with a frown. When Kilua said something, Gun fell silent for a moment, because he knew that Kilua was right. I only thought about myself and didn't think about the mood of the people around me at all. I even had this kind of situation when I was on Whale Island. In the mountains and forests of Whale Island, I went up without hesitation as soon as my brain got hot. It was because of this that I was in danger when I was a child. I met Kate and learned about Jin. And in the hunter test before, I wanted to pass the hunter test, so that I could find gold, so I always refused to admit defeat. I never thought that if I didn't admit defeat, Aunt Mito and the others would be so bad if they were really destroyed by Hanzo. Pain. From this point of view, my character is really annoying, and it's no wonder that Kilua's brother is so unfriendly to him. Even Kuripiku and Lirio, Kilua's older brothers, are willing to communicate a little bit, but they don't want to say a word to themselves alone. Well, I'm self-aware, sometimes I'm a bit overconfident. After thinking it through, Gun became even more embarrassed, and scratched the back of his head with a dry smile. So, you'd better change your personality. Your personality is really not very good. Kilua nodded and advised. Well, I'll pay attention. Gun nodded hastily and replied. I will try my best to change my personality, I can guarantee it, so kill you. Can you talk to Brother Fisher again, let him teach me too. Why, you're impatient because you're seeing my strength rapidly improve. Kill you teased as if glancing at Gun. Ah, indeed, among the four of us, you and Kripiku are improving the fastest, because Brother Fisher will teach you practice experience, and Lirio also has it. Only me, Brother Fisher doesn't want to teach me at all. Seeing your strength put such a big distance away from me. I feel so uncomfortable. As an enhancer, Gun didn't like to beat around the bush, so he directly expressed his thoughts. Well, I will continue to ask my brother tomorrow. But you have to promise my brother that you will change your character, so there may be some chances. Kilua did not refuse, nodded and said, Yeah, I will. By the way, Kilua, what is the heart of Our Lady Excess? Ah, this, I often hear my brother say this word, but I don't know it very well. Well, Kilua, you can ask about it tomorrow. Well, I'll ask tomorrow. Chapter 35 Gun's Guarantee While Kilua and Gun were practicing, Fisher was talking to Kuripika. Because of the one-step relationship, Kuripika does not need to waste time on improving the relationship between Nchi, so Kuripika spent a month in Kyukalu Mountain developing various N skills. Kuripika, who was born with a strong natural capital, easily mastered various application skills under Fisher's personal guidance, and even mastered advanced application skills initially and the main is also developed. It is no different from the original one. This time, Kuripika still developed the embodied N of the chain. Although the oath has undergone some changes, Kuripika's oath is not unrelated to the oath that should have appeared. The chains realized by Kuripika can still bind the members of Phantom Troop, 
so that the members of Phantom Troop are in a state of silence and cannot use an. As for the reason, it is because Kuripika reenacted the restriction and oath after using the restriction and oath offset card. Unexpectedly, Kuripika now has a double oath. It's just that the first oath was cancelled, and the second oath Kuripika must abide by the established rules. The bondage middle finger chain that silences Phantom Troop members can only be used on Phantom Troop members, not others. However, it cannot be said that the bound middle finger chain must only be used on Phantom Troop members. Kuripika's binding middle finger chain can still be used on other people but the special power on the binding middle finger chain cannot be forcibly used on other people. When using the binding middle finger chain on others, you can only rely on your own thoughts and energy to restrain others. The only difference from the original Kuripika is that the current Kuripika's Nianki cultivation base is stronger, and he has already stood in the first echelon of N. Fisher, I have arrived in New Kexin City. Next, I will go to find a gangster and join the gangster to find out about Phantom Troop. Kuripika's voice came from the phone and Kuripika was reporting his whereabouts to Fisher. Why did you join the gang? Wouldn't it be better to just choose the influence of the Zoldyk family in New Kexin City? Fisher was a little puzzled by Kuripika's operation. Kuripika has now joined the Zoldyk family and has become his own direct steward. He is already qualified to use the resources of the Zoldyk family. Why did he join the gang just like the original book? No, I just joined the Zoldyk family, and I didn't make any contribution to the Zoldyk family. I'm very grateful to have such a great opportunity from you and I can't let the Zoldyk family continue to waste resources on my affairs. Regarding Fisher's kindness, Kuripika immediately refused. Besides, my purpose in coming to Ukexin City is to collect the fiery eyes of the Kuluta tribe living in the market besides dealing with Phantom Troop. This will be a very large loss of funds. I have done my research and I am going to join the Nozra family. The princess of the Nozra family is a human organ collector. In this family, I can collect the red eyes without paying any money. After rejectant Fisher after the kindness of Kuripika, he revealed his plan, which was no different from the original plan. That's right, I understand. Since you already have a plan, then I won't interfere. However, once something happens to me, you have to put down what you're doing and be there when you're called. That's okay. Hearing this, Fisher slightly nodding, then said, Of course, you can just let me know when something happens, and I will rush to your place as soon as possible. Kuripika replied, Well, by the way, do you need my help in dealing with Phantom Troop? Fisher nodded slightly, and then asked, No no need. I may need your help before, but now, I just want to do it myself. I may not be able to defeat a whole brigade, but I am very confident in defeating each of them. Kuripika refused again. Well, you decide for yourself, you can come to me when you need help. Fisher is not reluctant about this. The two continued talking for a few minutes before hanging up. Standing in front of the floor-to-ceiling windows, Fisher looked at the night scene outside the window and remained silent. Although Kuripika said that no help is needed. Fisher will still go to Ukexin City when the auction in Ukexin City is about to start. After all, Kilua will definitely pass by then. Before parting, the four of Kilua made an agreement to meet in Ukexin City on September 1st. At that time, there will be a gathering place, and even with Kuripika watching, Fisher is not at ease. After admiring the night view for a while, Fisher washed up, lay down on the bed and fell asleep. Early the next morning, Fisher came to the training room on the 235th floor as usual. Kill you and Gunnar two energetic guys who are already sweating here. As soon as Fisher appeared, the two quickly gathered together. Brother, Gun promises to get rid of his ignorant personality, so don't ignore Gun all the time. As soon as he leaned in front of Fisher, Kill you said straight to the point. Fisher, Kill you sudden words made Fisher a little speechless. Then, Fisher's eyes shifted to Gun's body. Noticing that Fisher looked over, Gun shuddered all over, straightened his body and met Fisher's firm gaze. Brother Fisher, I promise, I will definitely get rid of the stink of being overwhelmed, and will not act impulsively or rashly. Looking at Fisher, Gun promised loudly, Fisher, regarding Gun's guarantee, Fisher naturally wouldn't believe this guy with just one word. However, Fisher, the character of Enhancers N, is very clear. Once a promise is made, it will definitely be followed without accident. Put your companions first at all times, can you do that? Fisher didn't respond, but asked instead, yes, I will put kill you first at all times. Brother Fisher, don't worry. Gun is also sensitive, knowing the meaning of Fisher's question, and hastily assured him. Fisher didn't speak, just looked at Gun quietly. After a long while, Fisher looked away and said lightly, It's up to you. I will teach you in the next month. I hope you will not let me down. Kill you I will stay with Gun for the rest of the time, and it is a good thing that Gun's strength can be improved. At least it will not become a burden. Fisher is also thinking about it. If Gun's lack of strength becomes a burden. Fisher 100% believes that Kilua will be restrained because of Gun's burden, and will be in danger at that time. It is better to improve this kid's strength together. Dot. Great, thank you bro. Thank you, brother Fisher. The two cubs clapped their hands excitedly, and then shouted at Fisher in unison. Chapter 36 Your uncle is still, no, your brother is still your brother. In Hansen Fisher also practiced. When Kripika became his direct butler before, 
Fisher acquired the trait of absolute time, and then Fisher specially practiced enhancer. This thing can strengthen the physical body, which is a very good ability. Although most of Fisher was teaching Kripika, Kilyu and Lirio during the month in Kukalu Mountain, Fisher also found time to practice. With Fisher's current strength, practicing enhancer is all about standing on the shoulders of giants and looking far away, so there is no need to practice step by step like the first conjurer. In addition, as long as the enhancer is strong enough, it can display its own characteristics. So Fisher's enhancer is not much weaker than Conjurer's Thunder. Coupled with the ability to increase tenfold, Fisher's cultivation on the enhancer is also very powerful. After all, Fisher's talent is very strong. Therefore, Fisher is more than enough to teach Conjurer's Kilua or Enhancer's Gun. Kilua and Gun's talent is stronger than Fisher's. Although they don't have the talent of Fisher's tenfold increase, their cultivation is also very strong, and their strength improves rapidly. Time passed as Fisher taught the two, and a month passed in a flash. In a month's time, the improvement of the strength of the two little ones is really terrifying, at least very scary among normal and people. Except Fisher, there is no comparison between being personally guided by someone and knowing the concept of self-cultivation. In the original book, the two came into contact with Wing in Sky City and developed N. They obtained several foundations of N from Wing, but they didn't know anything else. Apostrophe practice method. However, it's not Wing's fault either and the two are not Wing's official disciples, so Wing naturally didn't teach them too much, but just enlightened them for them. After that, a lot of time was wasted because of the competition. In the original book, there is only one peak period for the strength of the two to improve. That is the hands-on teaching of Bisji who received the heart source in the Island of Greed. In the Island of Greed, it only took the two of them a few months to upgrade from the level of beginners to the level of Mencha and others. This time, under the full guidance of Fisher, the two have approached this level in just one month. Give them two more months and the two of them should be able to reach Menchai's strength during the Menchai Hunter test. Looking at the two on the training ground who were crying like rain without any complaints, Fisher muttered inwardly. The fact that the two can achieve such a big improvement in such a short period of time has a lot to do with their hard work besides their own talents. Fisher told the two that he would only be here for a month, and that he would only have one month to teach them. As a result, the two of them squeezed themselves desperately after they found out. In the 24 hours a day, there are 15 hours of cultivation. Thanks to the presence of Fisher, the healing ability is fully utilized, and the two bodies can be restored to their peak, otherwise their bodies would have been broken by the two of them. After all, even when it came to the ant chapter, the two of them did not practice more than 10 hours a day. The two of them now practiced 15 hours a day, so it would be strange if they didn't collapse. With the current improvement speed of the two of them, if they encounter Phantom Troop in New Kexin City by then, they should not be helpless. No matter how bad they are, they should be able to escape instead of being caught directly as before. Two people practicing. Fisher said silently, Brother, just as Fisher was thinking about the upcoming Ukex in City, Kilua walked over with Gun. What's wrong? Fisher asked suspiciously, Brother, you are leaving tomorrow. Before you leave, fight us for a mentoring battle. Kilua cut to the chase and stated his purpose. Um, are you sure? You should have seen the battle between me and Hisoku a month ago. Fisher raised his eyebrows when he heard this. The battle between him and Hisoku a month ago was unknown to most ordinary people. They only knew that the battle was fierce, but they couldn't tell what was wrong but it should be able to see a lot in the eyes of N. Gun and Kilua are no exception. Knowing their strength, these two little guys still want to challenge themselves. It's really a newborn calf not afraid of tigers. Well, I'm sure. I hope my brother can fight with us. We want to know what level the two of us are now. Hearing this, Kilua not only didn't take back the challenge, but his expression became more determined. Gun is the same. Okay, then I'll treat you first, and we'll start later. Seeing this, Fisher did not refuse. It didn't take long for Fisher to restore the duo to peak form in the training room. Kilyu and Gun stood in line, staring at Fisher. Brother Fisher, I'm going to FK. Gun shouted first, and then rushed towards Fisher. Seeing this, Kilyu also rushed over with lightning flashing all over his body. Swish! Exclamation mark. Snapped! Exclamation mark. Snapped! Exclamation mark. It's done. After the two thunderbolts passed, Fisher clapped his hands and said calmly, then turned and left. Both Kilyu and Gun were lying on the floor covered in scorched black. Even Kilyu, who had started to practice electric current, and was no exception. Without the ability to fight back at all, the two of them were killed directly. Lying sprawled on the ground, Gun and Kilua both opened their mouths, and a thick smoke came out of their mouths. They turned their heads and looked at each other, and they both saw the smile in each other's eyes. There's absolutely no power to fight back. I have to say, your uncle is still your uncle? Ah, uh, no, your brother is still your brother. Even if he becomes stronger, he will beat you in seconds. One month, that is one month. After one month, Fisher separated from the two cubs left the Sky Arena and returned to Kukalu Mountain. After returning to Kukalu Mountain, Fisher did not continue to delay, and directly started the task of signing in that he had been procrastinating for a long time. In Fisher's room, under a burst of white light, 
Fisher's figure slowly disappeared. Dot. Fisher woke up in a shaking, and in a dim moment, Fisher heard someone calling himself beside him. Brother Fisher, wake up. The voice gradually became clear from the haze, and Fisher sat up abruptly. Brother Fisher, you finally woke up. Fisher's waking up seemed to make the person who had been shouting Fisher very happy, and his voice couldn't help but tinge with joy. Fisher also turned his head and looked over. After seeing the person calling him, Fisher couldn't help being a little dazed. How is this going? Why does Nicole Robin call me brother? Looking at the little one in front of him, Fisher was a little confused. However, the next moment, a torrent of information exploded in Fisher's mind, making Fisher frown. After a while, Fisher came back to his senses and figured out his current situation. After the system sent itself to this world, it also arranged an identity for itself. Fisher's current identity is that Nicole Robin grew up with her and has always cared about her. She doesn't hate her brother. Of course, it's not her own brother, but the kind who reported to the group for warmth. Fisher's identity in this world is an orphan in Ahara, who grew up alone. Also because of the relationship of growing up alone, he was very sensible since he was a child. He was not as naughty as those little kids in Ahara and he was not influenced by those ignorant people in Ahara to regard Robin as a demon. Robin, who has no parents, has a very good relationship, helping each other and growing up together. Although Robin has an uncle, it is almost the same as not having one. Brother Fisher, are you okay? Robin asked worriedly as if seeing Fisher in a daze. It's okay, Fisher replied lightly, with a slightly gentle tone. For this sudden extra sister, Fisher still didn't know how to deal with it for a while, but after seeing Robin's experience in the previous life, Fisher still felt pity for Robin. So even though he didn't know how to deal with it, his tone was still quite moderate. Very good. By the way, Brother Fisher, you've been sleeping all day and all night. You must be very hungry. I brought bread over here. You can eat it quickly. Hearing Fisher's response, Nicole Robin was also relieved, and then thought what, hurriedly ran towards the table not far away, ran over with a piece of black bread, and handed it to Fisher. Excitedly. This made Fisher stunned again. Chapter 37 Accept. Fisher who has seen Nicole Robin's experience, naturally knows that the bread in Nicole Robin's hands is her daily food. I didn't expect to give it to myself. Nor is Fisher in a daze because Nicole Robin gave her food to herself. The reason why Fisher was in a daze was because it was the first time he encountered such a situation, and he couldn't react for a while. When Robin's voice sounded again, Fisher came back to his senses. Brother Fisher, the bread is a bit hard. I'll go and cook some vegetable soup for you. Robin seemed to think of something after seeing Fisher's blank look. He put the bread beside the bed, and then walked towards the kitchen. Orderly I started doing housework. Only then did Fisher notice the environment he was in now. This is a very simple small house with bare walls. Except for Fisher's bed, there is only a creaking table that is almost useless. Other than that is where Robin is now. Also a very shabby room with only a very messy little stove where Robin was lighting a fire right now. It's really a very extraordinary identity. After whispering to himself, Fisher turned his attention to Robin in the kitchen. Although the system arranged such an identity for himself, Fisher didn't have much affection for Robin. Fisher will not really regard Robin as his sister just because of the identity arranged by the system, those false memories. Fisher's current impression of Robin is the one he saw in his previous life. Just pity for this guy. Robin, don't do it, go out with me. Getting up from the bed, Fisher shouted to the busy Robin. He will not eat these black bread. If Fisher really had the same status, it would be a good thing to have black bread to eat, but he wasn't. This dark stuff is hard to eat. So Fisher decided it would be better to go out and get some game. After all, I still have Manchise craftsmanship, so I can't treat myself badly. Huh? Robin, who was busy, turned his head and looked at Fisher with a puzzled face. Under the bright moon and silver frost, on the west coast of Ahara, Fisher and Robin were sitting in front of a bonfire. A huge, sizzling barbecue was hanging above the bonfire, and Robin was at the moment holding a piece of delicious barbecue in his hand, he gnawed on it with relish, his mouth full of oil. Not far from the two of them, there was a huge gap in the body of a huge sea king, and there was no human breath at this time. This is Fisher's masterpiece. As a strong man, Fisher would not go out of his way to eat black bread if conditions permit. So Fisher brought Robin here to start a small stove. It's just a Neptune, and it's just a piece of cake for Fisher. Of course, if it's the giant Neptunes in the deep sea, the kind near Merlock Island, Fisher might have to spend a lot of time. Speaking of which, the quality of Sea King meat is really good. Maybe you can bring some back to Menchai to see if you can strengthen her. At this time, Fisher was also holding a piece of barbecue and eating it slowly and elegantly, while eating while thinking. Brother Fisher, the barbecue you grilled is delicious. This is the first time I have eaten such delicious food. At this time, Robin who killed a large piece of barbecue said with a smile, Eat more if it tastes good. Hearing this, Fisher said lightly, then cut off another piece of barbecue threaded it through a branch and handed it over. Robin quickly reached out to take it, looked at Fisher, hesitated for a moment, and then ate again. Fisher didn't speak, and the two ate the barbecue quietly. After a while, Robin stopped what he was saying, looked at Fisher with a melancholy expression, gritted his teeth, and said to Fisher, 
Brother Fisher, what did Robin do? Fisher, who was eating barbecue, was taken aback when he heard this, and looked over. I saw that Robin's face was full of sadness at this time, tears were already welling up in the corners of his eyes, and he looked like he was about to cry. What's the matter? Fisher was also a little confused at this time, why did it happen all of a sudden, almost crying? What happened? Brother Fisher, what did Robin do to make you angry? I feel that Brother Fisher is alienating Robin, and I feel that there is a long, long distance between you and Brother Fisher. Robin doesn't want this. Hearing Fisher's response, Robin's tears flowed down immediately, and the snot also flowed out of his nose, and his nose twitched and cried. Regardless, he rushed towards Fisher, threw himself into Fisher's arms and cried loudly. In Robin's eyes, Fisher is his only family member on this island, and even the scholars in the Tree of Omniscience can't compare. Yesterday, after Fisher had a cold, she woke up like this. Robin could clearly feel that Fisher's feelings for her had undergone a huge change. There was an insurmountable distance between the two of them. She didn't want this to happen. She didn't want her only relative to leave her. This sudden scene made Fisher a little overwhelmed, staring blankly at Robin who was crying in his arms, and didn't know how to deal with it for a while. However, listening to Robin crying, Fisher also gradually thought of her future experience, but her heart became softer. After a long silence, Fisher stretched out her arms and hugged Robin lightly on Robin's head. Touched lightly. Brother Fisher. Robin noticed Fisher's action, and Robin looked up at Fisher, still sobbing. Don't worry, it's fine, take a good rest, and you'll be fine tomorrow. Fisher said in a gentle tone. Really? Robin didn't believe it. Really, I'm not kidding you. Fisher continued, the corners of his mouth raised slightly, and a rare smile appeared on his face. Seeing this smile, Robin was overjoyed immediately, with an expression of not knowing whether to cry or laugh. His mouth was wide open and tears flowed into his mouth, but Robin didn't care at all. Because she felt her brother was back, that's how Brother Fisher used to smile. However, laughing and laughing, Robin's eyelids twitched, and finally closed gradually, and the whole person fell into Fisher's arms. Soon, the sound of even breathing came from Fisher's arms. Looking at the little girl in his arms, a trace of pity flashed in Fisher's eyes. Forget it, one more sister is one more sister. Nicole Robin, this character who has been abandoned by fate since childhood, was a tragic portrayal in the first half of his life and he was not redeemed until he met the Straw Hat Pirates. Well, maybe I can change your future destiny. How can you say that you are also my sister now? The title of Devil's Son is still insensitive. However, Robin is still too young, and it is too risky for her to wander alone in the sea. Perhaps I can rescue Robin's mother, Alvia, and let her take Robin with her. That woman has been wandering at sea for several years and has relatively rich experience. Chapter 38, Robin's Choice Taking Robin back to his home in this world, which is the small broken house. Fisher didn't mean to send Robin to her uncle's house. After all, I have come to this world, and the demon slaying order is probably not too far away. Robin's uncle's family will not be able to survive, so it is better for Robin to take it with him. Otherwise, if there is an accident, I will come here for nothing. Speaking of which, Sauron hasn't arrived here yet. Then it should be a long time before the arrival of the demon slaughter order. The arrival of Soro only appeared after Robin became a scholar. I don't know if Robin has obtained the title of scholar from the scholars in the Tree of Omniscience. If you get it, then Soro's appearance will be within these two days, and the Demon Slaughter Order will be coming soon. If not, then it's impossible to predict when the Demon Slaying Order will appear. Fisher looked at Robin who was sleeping on the bed, thinking silently. Although Robin survived alone in the sea in the original book, he is unaccompanied and wanted. He can only survive in the dark. Now that I am here, let's change it. Now there are two options. First, let no one know of Robin's existence, prevent Robin from being targeted by the world government and become the son of the devil who everyone shouts and beats. He lives incognito and without danger. Second, when Robin's mother Olvio appears, bring her here in time, give Olvio a favor, provide her with a chance to become stronger, protect Robin, and the mother and daughter rely on each other to live go on. But you will still be wanted by the world government and become the son of the devil. Inquire tomorrow. If Robin wants to live without danger, then choose the first one. If he wants to be with Olvio, an irresponsible mother, then choose the second. However, with Robin's personality, it's probably second. After all, Robin values family affection very much, and wants to see Olvia's mother very much. Muttering to himself, Fisher's eyes fell outside the window, and the moonlight still bright and clean, swaying silver frost. Leaning against the wall, Fisher slowly closed his eyes. Dot. In the early morning of the next day, as the first tray of sight fell into the room through the window, Fisher slowly opened his eyes and looked towards the bed. At this time, Robin was still in a deep sleep but he couldn't continue to sleep under the sunlight, and he was already showing signs of waking up. Sure enough, a few seconds passed, and Robin's eyelids began to twitch under the sunlight, ready to open his eyes at any time. In the next second, Robin unconsciously covered his eyes with his hands, and then slowly opened his eyes. Hey, morning. Robin who just woke up reads a little confused. However, the next moment, Robin, who was still in a sleepy state, 
opened his eyes wide and shouted, Brother Fisher. After shouting, Robin was ready to look for Fisher's existence, but before she could take any action, Fisher's voice came from beside her. Here, Robin quickly looked over, only to see Fisher leaning against the wall and looking at him quietly with a gentle expression. Brother Fisher. Seeing this, Robin jumped up from the bed, landed quickly, and threw himself into Fisher's arms. Morning. Fisher gently stroked Robin's head and greeted him lightly. Brother Fisher, good morning. Robin also came out of Fisher's arms and called obediently. Oops, I didn't go back last night, uncle and the others. After shouting, Robin suddenly thought of something, became panicked, and wanted to run outside. Don't go back in the future, follow me. Fisher stopped Robin, stroked his head gently, and said gently, Huh? Brother Fisher. Robin froze on the spot when he heard that, his little head didn't know what Fisher meant for a moment. Dot. Fisher didn't explain Robin's doubts, but asked gently whether Robin wanted to follow him or his uncle and live with his uncle. It turned out that Robin didn't have a good impression of her uncle's family. She had always been dependent on others and was used as a coolie. The uncle's family did not regard her as a relative. And Fisher was her only friend and relative after being hated by the residents of Ahara. So between the two, Robin didn't think about which one was more important, and chose Fisher directly. This made Fisher somewhat relieved. After receiving the system's message, Fisher knew how deep his identity and Robin's relationship was. Under such circumstances, if Robin still chose to live with her uncle, then Fisher would have to consider how to treat Robin. If Robin chooses to live with her uncle, Fisher will still rescue Robin under the demon slaying order, but this is just according to the task requirements, and there will be no relationship. Even if Fisher will appear in this world again in the future, it has nothing to do with him. Obviously, though. That's not going to happen. Robin will still be his sister in this world. Huh? Brother Fisher, what did you mean just now? Robin was walking on the beach on the west coast, looking at Fisher puzzled. Just now Fisher has given the question of two choices to Robin, but Robin obviously doesn't know why Fisher asked this question. Don't ask so many questions, if you have these two options, which one would you choose? Fisher said gently. Is there a third option? Hearing this, Robin was not only silent, but asked cautiously after a while. The third choice? Fisher was puzzled. Well. The third choice. Robin nodded with a smile, and then said, There is no Brother Fisher in the second choice, and I think Brother Fisher is with me, so this is the third choice. Fisher, a third option? Unfortunately, this is impossible. Fisher didn't answer, but said inwardly that he would leave here after completing the task. But Fisher also knew Robin's choice, which was the second one, just as he guessed. As for why the two came here again, it was naturally because Fisher wanted to wait for the giant Soro here. If that guy comes here, then the demon slaughter order will not be far away. As for Robin's doctorate question, Fisher has already asked it just now. Robin's doctorate degree has not yet been obtained. As for the reason, it is because of the existence of Fisher in the message. Robin does not often go to the tree of omniscience, although I pass by occasionally, and I can understand historical texts, but the relationship with those scholars in the tree of omniscience is not very deep, so I didn't deliberately go for a doctoral exam. I just don't know what level my strength is in this world. There should be an elite lieutenant general level in the Navy headquarters. Do you want to confirm with the Navy people at that time? Brother Fisher, what's that? While Fisher was thinking, Robin's voice suddenly sounded next to his ear, and Fisher looked up. This is Soro. Has it started? Chapter 39 The Arrival of Soro, the Eve of the Demon Slaying Order On the sandy beach on the coast, there was also a giant whose life and death were unknown. This giant has orange fluffy hair and a big belly. It is the giant Lieutenant Admiral Hagavar de Soro of the Navy Headquarters. Brother Fisher, this is the giant family mentioned in the book. Standing beside Soro, Robin stabbed Soro with a branch while asking Fisher. Ah, the giant family, and it's also the giant family of the Admiral of the Navy. Fisher nodded slightly and replied. Immediately, Fisher grabbed Soro's fluffy hair and walked towards the forest. Under Fisher's power, Soro's huge body began to move towards the forest on the ground. This was real friction, and only one person was pressing on it. Brother Fisher is amazing. Looking at this scene, Robin's little face was full of admiration. Hey, hey, hey. Not long after Fisher's action started, a painful groan came from Soro's mouth. Little devil, stop. Soro woke up from the coma due to the severe pain from the scalp, and without thinking, he slapped Fisher with a giant palm. Boom! Exclamation mark. A huge collision sounded and the huge body rose into the air and flew directly into the sea. On the coast, Fisher clapped his hands casually, speechless. That's right, Soro, who took the initiative to attack, returned to the sea again. Although he is a giant and powerful, Fisher is not an ordinary person. Before the update of Inhui, Fisher could push the 128-ton six-door trial door without panting. Now that Inhui has been updated, Fisher can already push it. The seven trial doors were opened, and Soro didn't use much effort in his haste so he was slapped away by Fisher. Although Soro is a lieutenant general of the Navy headquarters, he is not an elite lieutenant general, and his strength is much worse. In the original book, it was solved by Okiji's move. Brother Fisher, are you alright? At this moment, 
Robin, who was frightened by the sudden change just now, came to his senses, ran over quickly, and asked worriedly. I'm fine? Don't worry, Robin. Fisher reached out to stroke Robin's head and comforted him. That's good. Robin carefully observed Fisher's situation, and found that Fisher was safe and sound, so he was relieved. Boom! Exclamation mark. Hey, you kid, do you know how to respect the old and love the young? As soon as Robin finished speaking, there was a loud noise on the surface of the sea, and huge waves rose into the sky. Soro stood up from the shallows, shouted angrily, Fisher, Robin, respect, respect the old and love the young. Hearing Soro's words, both Fisher and Robin were stunned, and Robin stammered, no matter how you look at it, Soro is a mature man, is he old or young? Could it be that the situation of the giant race is infancy, or is it old age? Ah, a slip of the tongue. Soro also realized at this time that he seemed to have said something terrible, and was immediately embarrassed. In order to hide his embarrassment, Soro walked towards the coast. After landing on the beach, Soro began to shake the seawater on his body, and his fluffy hair kept shaking. The sense of sight made Fisher laugh a little, and Robin didn't have so many scruples. After seeing Soro's appearance, he immediately pointed at Soro and laughed, and said, Brother Fisher, this giant is like a dog in the town, a dog. That's how they shake the water off their bodies when they come out of the water. Soro, who was shaking, froze in place immediately. His head slowly looked towards Fisher and Robin, and his eyes fell on Robin inexplicably. That kind of gaze seems to say you are a devil. Although it was embarrassing at first sight, the farce ended soon. On the beach, Soro was sitting on the ground, opposite to it was a small cliff, and Fisher and Robin were sitting on the cliff. Hello, I'm Soro, what's your name? Soro introduced himself with a smile, as if the embarrassment just now didn't happen at all, and, judging from its appearance, it didn't seem to be a fake. If it were Fisher who was being dragged on the ground by someone's hair, Fisher would definitely make it wrong for that person to live and die. I'm Robin, and he's Fisher's brother. Robin took the initiative to speak and introduced Fisher by the way. Hello, Robin, Fisher. Soro nodded and shouted after hearing this. That's how we know each other. However, Fisher, why did you pull my hair just now? It hurts so much. After greeting Robin and Fisher, Soro changed the subject and looked at Fisher very displeased. Originally, Fisher saw that Soro had completely forgotten what happened just now, and thought that Soro was out of his mind, but it seems not. At least this guy still knows how to be angry. Drag you to the forest? Or do you want to continue stranded on the beach? Fisher said flatly, kindly acting like a donkey. Um, it seems to be the same. As soon as these words came out, Soro was stunned for a moment, suddenly felt a little embarrassed, and scratched the back of his head in embarrassment. Although he is not afraid of being washed by the tide, it is better if this kind of thing does not happen. Saw you oh, when was the demon slaying order issued? Fisher didn't care about Soro's naive appearance and asked straight to the point. Fisher remembered that Soro escaped because he knew that the world government had asked the navy to execute a demon-slaying order on Ahara, obliterating everything, so he didn't want to join forces. Since Soro appeared here, the demon-slaying order should be on the way. How do you know? Soro, who was in embarrassment, suddenly shrank his pupils and looked at Fisher dully. Chapter 40, Shackles of Grace Watching Soro leave on the dangling raft that was about to fall apart at any moment, Fisher took Robin back to Ahara's house. This guy Soro, after he knew in the original book that the place where he drifted was Ahara, he started to prepare to leave here. He didn't want to participate in the demon slaying order, and he didn't want to be discovered by the navy. The reason why Ohara was killed was because he became attached to Robin and wanted to save Robin, so he was killed by Okiji. This time, with the appearance of Fisher, there was not much interaction between Ohara and Robin, so Soro had no intention of staying. With the help of Fisher, it took only one day to complete the giant raft that was enough to carry him and left here dangling. As for why Fisher helped this guy, it was because Fisher didn't want this guy to make trouble here. This guy is here, maybe something unexpected will happen then, so it's better to send him away. Fisher plans to find Olvia before the demon slaying order starts, forcefully takes her by his side, and then takes Olvia and Robin out of here after the demon slaying order starts. If it wasn't for the system's rule that you can only leave here after the demon slaying order starts, Fisher would take Robin away now. However, there is no way. As for how to send the mother and daughter away under the siege of ten naval headquarters warships, Fisher naturally has a way. Thinking in his heart, Fisher bought two small fishing boats from the residents of Ahara during the two days when he was helping Sora make rafts, and pushed them into the sea. Brother Fisher, why did you push the fishing boat we brought into the sea? Robin, who was helping, was a little confused about the significance of Fisher's actions. It will be useful at that time. Hearing this, Fisher smiled faintly and said mysteriously as his eyes fell on the small fishing boat that was drifting farther and farther away. I hope there will be no accidents, otherwise it will be very difficult to take Robin and her mother Olya away from here. Okay, let's go back. By the way, Robin, what do you want to eat tonight? Fisher stared silently at the two small wooden boats that had become small black spots for a long time, then turned and walked towards the forest, greeting them as he walked. Hearing this, 
Robin hurriedly followed, followed Fisher, and said excitedly, I want to eat fried meatballs, tempura, and barbecue. It's all meat. Aren't you afraid of getting fat? No, Brother Fisher. Didn't you just portray me as a favor? I need a lot of nutrition for my next exercise, so don't worry at all. Hey, yeah, just order it directly, and I'll give you a whole piece of barbecue. Good. After much deliberation, Fisher decided to give Robin a favor as well. Because after I send Robin out of Ahara, I will leave this world and return to the world of Hunter x Hunter. It would be unrealistic for Olvia to portray Unhai alone, so Fisher asked Robin to also portray Unhai. Although Robin is his younger sister in this world, Fisher also has the idea of not wanting his relatives to portray Enhuya and become his subordinates, but special circumstances are treated specially. After all, Robin is going to be in the sea next time. The sea in this world is not calm, and accidents are easy to happen if you don't have any strength. Although Robin survived alone in the original book, Fisher dare not just believe in the original book. After all, he has appeared here, and the result of the butterfly effect will be great. Although it was a mission, Fisher didn't want to rescue Robin here, but in the end Robin fell in the sea, and his efforts would be in vain. So Fisher gave Robin the ability to become stronger quickly. Now all it takes is Olvia's return and the arrival of the Demon Slaying Order. As for the renewal of favors, Fisher wasn't worried at all. Renewal of Grace is originally a shackle placed by the gods on Grace, so that the users of Grace must have the action of the gods to be able to update, which is a heavy insurance for users of the Grace of Gods. As long as this shackle is removed, the benefactor user can update independently. This is also one of the reasons why Manchai was allowed to go out. Speaking of which, Robin is worthy of being one of the protagonist groups in this world, and his aptitude is no less than that of Manchai. After Fisher described the favor to Robin, Robin was automatically included in Fisher's power group. Fisher also got Robin's feedback as a result. Robin doesn't have much ability at a young age, the only thing he can show is his knowledge and flowers. The feedback Fisher gets is Robin's knowledge. In other words, the current Fisher has gained a lot of knowledge of this world, and at the same time has the ability to interpret historical texts. However, the inclusion of Robin's check-in Fisher has yet to take place. There is no other reason, but just after Fisher finished framing Robin's favor, the big man Soro came to the door to say goodbye. So Fisher put aside the registration for the time being, and took Robin to send Soro off. Now that I go back, I can sign in. After giving Robin a hunk of roast, Fisher immersed himself in the system. System. Sign in. Ding. Sign in successfully. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the intermediate level arm domineering, intermediate level knowledge color domineering, Nicole Robin special version. Listening to the system's prompt, even though Fisher has experienced it twice, he still feels envious and jealous, but of course there is no hatred. After all, whether it is Menchai, Kurapika or Robin, they are all members of his family and his subordinates, so he doesn't have to be jealous at all. Rather, it is a good thing for Fisher that his subordinates are strong which means that they can give him more help. Without any hesitation, looking at Robin who was gnawing on the barbecue, Fisher reached out and pressed Robin's forehead, and used the system's sign-in rewards on Robin under Robin's puzzled eyes. The next moment, Robin opened his mouth in confusion, and stared at Fisher dumbfounded. After a while, Robin came back to his senses and asked doubtfully, Brother Fisher, what was that just now? Don't ask for the ability I gave you, just choose it well, Fisher said gently. Well, I see, thank you Brother Fisher. Hearing this, Robin did not ask again, but thanked him with a bright smile. After the words fell, Robin, regardless of his greasy mouth, lightly touched Fisher's forehead. Lighten up, Fisher. Chapter 41 The Arrival of the Demon Slaying Order and the Discovery of Kuzin In the next two days, Fisher has been teaching Robin fighting skills on the coast, feeding Robin with moves, and improving Robin's strength. At the same time, Fisher and Robin discuss the domineering world of One Piece. Because Robin's age is too young, his physique is not good enough, and his physique is not good enough so he doesn't have a strong grasp of the two kinds of domineering. Both kinds of domineering can be used, but the power is very weak, and the time is also very short. Armed color domineering just used it for a minute, and he was so tired that he was out of breath. It is better to be domineering and knowledgeable. Perhaps it is because of the relationship between knowledge and domineering and mental power, and I have been in contact with books, and I have a lot of advantages in the spirit than in the body. Armed domineering is too tired to move in one minute but knowledgeable and domineering Robin can last five minutes. It can be said that the gap between the two is very large in terms of Robin's current situation. Fisher is very curious about this ability to capture nature elements, so he wants to try to see if he can master this ability. However, it is a pity that Fisher can't master the domineering thing at all. With a tenfold increase in talent, Fisher figured out the essence of domineering in just two days. This thing must be possessed by people in the world of One Piece, because it is the potential power possessed by the creatures in this world and Fisher is not from this world, so he doesn't have this potential power. However, the effect of domineering is very similar to Fisher's Nian Chi, both in terms of its source and its function. It's just that the domineering is relatively simple, 
and it can't develop all kinds of weird abilities like N. I don't know if N can grasp the body of the natural fruit like domineering. Fisher is very curious about this matter. After sending Robin and the others out, come back and find Okaji for a one-on-one -on -one fight. With this in mind, Fisher made a decision. While Fisher was training Robin's combat skills, on the opposite coast, a ship of the world government had quietly landed, and a group of CP members in suits surrounded an official and stepped into Ahara. These fissures are not clear, and they are still teaching Robin at this time. However, soon, a radio sound came into Fisher's ears, and Fisher and Robin stopped from training. Brother Fisher, is everything on the radio true? Robin came to Fisher's side holding a wooden stick, and said in disbelief, it's true. Fisher shook his head and gave a definite answer. The broadcast from the town in the center of the island is the voice of the CP members of the world government, and it is a notice to inform the island residents to evacuate and take a lifeboat to the coast. This let Fisher know that the demon slaying order had arrived. Robin, stay here, don't run around, I'll go to the sky to see. After a moment of silence, Fisher told Robin. I see, brother Fisher. Robin nodded obediently and replied. Fisher didn't say much either. The lightning flashed all over his body, and flowed to his back, turning into two lightning wings. With the flapping of the lightning wings, Fisher soared into the sky, and quickly came to the sky. This is then developed by Fisher. It uses the wings made of lightning, which can float in the air for a short time not for a long time. Sure enough, Ahara has been surrounded, careless. It seems that we have to hurry up and bring Olvia here. It's not good to be taken away by the CP. After all, I have already promised Robin. I glanced at the ten people who surrounded Ohara. Several warships, Fisher whispered, with a flash, Fisher rushed down. At the same time, on the sea not far away, a deck chair was placed on the deck of a warship, and a person was lying on the deck chair, with a magazine covering his face. At the moment Fisher lifted off, the lying figure quickly removed the magazine on his face, and quickly looked in Fisher's direction. What's that? Cusin, who was still just a lieutenant general, frowned as he looked at Fisher's figure. The next moment, Cusin saw that Fisher's figure rushed down quickly, which made Cusin's frown deepen. After explaining to the sailors on the warship, Cusin soared into the sky and flashed towards where Fisher was. On the other side, Fisher had already returned to the ground at this time. Let's go, Robin, let's go find your mother. Olvia. Fisher returned to the ground and stretched out his hands to Robin. Seeing this, Robin immediately had a smile on his face. Robin has been looking forward to this day since Fisher gave her the choice. Now that Fisher said so, Robin knew that her mother, Olvia, should be back. With a kick of both feet, Robin threw himself into Fisher's arms. Fisher also wrapped his arms around Robin, and then lightning flashed all over his body again, and the two of them flashed into the forest in an instant, heading in the direction of the Tree of Omniscience. This is the tacit understanding between the two. In the past few days, the two have often traveled back and forth to the coast and towns like this. The lightning on Fisher did not hurt Robin, because when entering this state, Fisher also used the healing to wrap Robin. And not long after Fisher left, Cousin's figure appeared here, so fast that he almost caught up with Fisher. You can see the whole picture from a glimpse, and you can know the late autumn from a leaf. It has to be said that Cousin is worthy of being one of the three future generals, and he already has this kind of strength at this time. Nobody? No, no. There was definitely someone here just now, and the breath rushed towards the center of the island. After coming here, Cusin frowned, and his expression under the sunglasses was very serious. Then, Cusin moved again get up and dodge in the direction Fisher left. At this time, in the forest, Fisher's figure was moving quickly, almost a hundred meters in one breath, and the tree of omniscience was getting closer and closer. Brother Fisher, is mom really on the island? Although she believed in Fisher, Robin still didn't dare to be afraid in this situation. Fearing that Mom Olvia wasn't on the island as Fisher said. Don't worry, Olvia should be on the island, and you will meet soon. Fisher promised with a faint smile. Yeah. Robin nodded again and again, then turned his head forward, looking in the direction of the tree of omniscience, his eyes full of expectation. Soon, the two rushed out of the forest and entered the town. As soon as they entered the town, noisy voices reached the ears of the two of them, and a large group of residents ran along the avenue towards the sea with large bags. Fisher and Robin lovers kept their eyes on each other, completely ignoring the group of people, and rushed straight to the target. Soon, however, Fisher stopped. Brother Fisher, Robin, who was expecting to see his mother, saw Fisher stop, and suddenly looked up suspiciously. Fisher didn't answer, but slowly stretched out his hand, and pulled the woman who was running towards him, holding a long gun and wearing a coat, directly into his arms. Chapter 42, Quest Completed Cousin's nervous scalp. Who are you and what are you doing? The woman who was dragged into Fisher's arms struggled immediately, but was restrained by Fisher's thoughts, unable to move at all, and could only shout. However, Fisher ignored her yelling and turned his gaze to the direction of the forest where he came. The cold breath, it must be that guy. Looking at the forest entrance, Fisher murmured in a low voice, Mum? At this moment, Robin in Fisher's arms looked at the woman who was dragged into his arms by Fisher, and cried out in disbelief. In the past few days, 
Fisher had already told Robin about Nicole Olvia's appearance, so Robin immediately recognized Olvia's identity. As soon as Robin's voice appeared, the woman who was struggling suddenly stopped and looked at Robin beside her. Robin, perhaps because of the relationship between mother and daughter, Olvia also recognized Robin immediately, and exclaimed involuntarily. However, after shouting, Olvia remembered something, and quickly turned her face to the other side, holding back her tears and not looking at Robin. When Robin saw this, tears flowed down instantly, and she buried herself in Olvia's arms and cried out loudly, with endless grievances in her crying. Mommy mommy. And Robin's actions also made Olvia feel sad. Tears accumulated in the corners of her eyes, but she didn't dare to shed them, a stubborn ninja. But at this time, Fisher, who was holding the two of them, looked very solemn. Fisher could feel that icy breath getting closer. After a moment of silence, Fisher had a thought and left here with Robin and Olvia. And a few seconds after the three of Fisher disappeared, Cusin's figure flashed out from the entrance of the forest. Disappeared. Cusin, who appeared, looked at the place where the three of Fisher were just now, in shock. On the other side, a small fishing boat was currently moored on the coast of the island closest to Ahara. At a certain moment, three figures suddenly appeared on the fishing boat. These are three figures are exactly the three fishers. As for why the three of them appeared here, it was because of Fisher's magic, flickering. This is the only magic in Fisher's bounty. Except for the last time when he went to the depths of the wet mel wetland with his grandfather Gino. Fisher hasn't used this magic for a long time. And the fishing boat that the three of Fisher are standing on is the fishing boat that Fisher released with Robin before, and Fisher has already set flashing marks on the two boats. Unexpectedly, the fishing boat would drift to this small island without anyone. Robin, you and Olvia have a good talk here, and I'll be back later. After putting the two down, Fisher confessed to Robin. Yeah, I know, brother Fisher. Robin replied obediently, wiping away tears. Fisher nodded slightly, and after glancing at Olvia, he left here again with a flicker. Ha, huh, the magic power consumed is really huge. It directly consumes half of my magic power. It seems that the distance is quite far. The town of Ahara, the place where Fisher left just now, Fisher's figure returned here again, and as soon as he returned here, Fisher sensed feeling the magic power in his body. He couldn't help murmuring in a low voice. Hey, that just now is the space ability. At this time, a voice came from not far in front of Fisher. Fisher looked up and saw that the elite Lieutenant General Kizan of the Navy headquarters was walking over slowly with his hands in his pockets in a cool posture. However, Fisher doesn't have time for this guy right now. At this time, Fisher is receiving the sign-in reward from the system. After sending Robin and O'Hara out of Ahara, Fisher's check-in was complete. Fisher moved back to Ahara, just as the system beep ended. Looking at the dark blue, apple-shaped, and arabesque spiral pattern devil fruit in the system space. Fisher had an idea and directly used this fruit. The devil fruit rewarded by the system does not need to be eaten, as long as it is used directly with the mind. As soon as the thought moved, the thunderous fruit in the system space turned into light and disappeared. At the moment when it completely disappeared, Fisher felt an incomparably powerful force springing up within him, and faint blue lightning appeared involuntarily from his body, turning into a thunder snake, constantly exploding beside Fisher. Within two seconds, Fisher's body directly turned into lightning. Thunder fruit ability user, Cusin who was walking towards Fisher, froze when he saw this scene, and then his expression became serious. If he saw Fisher in other places, Kizan would be very happy, and excitedly extended an invitation to Fisher, inviting Fisher to join the Navy and become his colleague. But at this time and this place, it is not good to see Fisher, a Thunder Fruit capable user. This time is here in O'Hara, so Fisher is undoubtedly a resident of O'Hara, and the Navy is now destroying O'Hara, the hometown of this Thunder Fruit ability user which makes Kizan not only scalp numb, the navy has provoked a very difficult enemy for itself this time. Thunderbolt fruit users rarely appear in front of the world. But even so, the Thunderbolt fruit is the most powerful fruit among the natural fruits in the navy's records. And Fisher is now a Thunder fruit ability user. Now, against Fisher, Kuzan has only one option. That is to kill Fisher here, or defeat, capture Fisher and imprison him in the advancing city. Otherwise, once the tiger is released, it will definitely bring huge disasters to the navy. The hatred that destroys the hometown is simply irreconcilable. Because Fisher's elementalization shocked Kizan too much, Kuzan actually forgot about Fisher's sudden appearance just now. Sure enough, my intuition is not wrong. If I get the thunderous fruit, my strength will definitely skyrocket. It's just that I have just obtained it, and my strength has improved so much. Kizan's shock Fisher still ignored it. At this time, Fisher was feeling the changes in his body after obtaining the thunder fruit. It feels very good and the wonderful feeling of strength improvement makes Fisher very happy. Slowly calming down the joy in his heart, Fisher looked at Kuzin. Navy Headquarters Elite Lieutenant Admiral Kuzan, meeting for the first time. Looking at Kuzin, Fisher calmly greeted him. What a bad encounter, Thunderfruit ability user. Sorry, I have to arrest you, Kuzin said calmly. It's really unfriendly to say that you want to catch me as soon as we meet. But it's not bad. I just got this power, 
so I'll use you to test the improved strength. Fisher was a little surprised by Kizun's words, but soon understood the various reasons, and said with a smile. As soon as the words fell, Fisher took the initiative to launch an attack. A thick thunder column descended from the sky, violently and violently chopping down on Kizun. Boom! Exclamation mark. Chapter 43 Ice Cube Two Thorny Spears Exclamation mark. In the face of Fisher's thunder attack, Kizen did not sit still. When his pupils shrank, his body instinctively launched an attack, and two huge ice spears met the thunder pillar in an instant. Boom! Exclamation mark. The violent roar spread throughout the island. Horrific airwaves poured out to the surroundings like mountains and seas, and in just a split second, the houses around Fisher and Kizen were destroyed terribly. Kizen's side directly turned into a huge ice field while Fisher's side was completely destroyed by the power of lightning. The buildings more than 10 meters high directly became ruins, and the remnants of lightning turned into arcs and flickered on these dilapidated houses. So fast, such a powerful attack, I almost didn't react. Kizan was a little startled at this moment, looking at Fisher with a suspicious look. Fisher's attack speed just now, if he hadn't often sparred with Pelusino and had a condition reflex, he would not have been able to react. Moreover, this kind of power. It should be said that it is the most destructive natural fruit with both strength and speed. Exclamation mark. Kuzin, how many layers of power did you use just now? On the opposite side of Kuzin, Fisher did not continue to attack at this time, but looked at the flashing electric arc in his palm, and then asked Kuzin. Hearing this, Kuzin frowned slightly. He didn't know why Fisher asked this, but he still answered Fisher's question. Eight floors. The eight levels of power of the two thorny spears are the greatest power he has released in a hurry. If it is released with all its strength, the power will be stronger than this. It is estimated that the explosion will not only exceed the ice field with an area of 100 meters. The eighth floor, so that's the case. It seems that the power of my current thunder is higher than yours. Fisher nodded suddenly, and then said with a smile. Although I don't know if what Kizan said is true or not, even if it is false, it shouldn't be much different. Even if the power of Kizan's two thorny spears is wrong. It should be in the two values of the seventh floor and the ninth floor. And the power of the lightning pillar that Fisher just used was six layers close to seven layers. In this case, I'm stronger than Kizan right now. I just took the thunder fruit and got this kind of power. If I continue to develop it, the power of my thunder is definitely higher than that of Kizan's frozen fruit. Shouldn't it be called the thunderbolt fruit? After hearing Kizan's answer, Fisher became concerned. Although the power of the fruit depends on the talent of the developer, which varies from person to person, and if the talent is poor, the power developed will be unsatisfactory. But Fisher does not think that his talent is inferior to Kuzin. The talents of the two protagonists, Kilyu and Gun, are beyond my comparison, but I am not afraid of you Kuzin. Above me, hearing Fisher's words, Kuzin was suddenly dissatisfied. As a genius of the Navy, he has already become an elite lieutenant general and a candidate for general in the Navy headquarters in his twenties. Fisher actually told himself that his frozen fruit is not as powerful as him. Even the thunder fruit ability user is too arrogant. The worried Kuzin remained silent. Frost began to appear on his body and he entered an elemental state in a blink of an eye. He opened his mouth and spit out a gust of cold air. Without any warning, a huge ice and giant bird instantly took shape in front of Kuzin, fanning the gust of wind and blasting towards Fisher. Everything it passed turned into ice sculptures. Ice cube pop pheasant mouth. Facing this ferocious attack, Fisher did not panic at all. Slowly raised his arms, and the lightning gathered. Thunderbird, with a murmur, the huge thunder beast charged towards Kuzin's explosive beak. Although he just got the thunder fruit. Fisher has been playing thunder for several years, and he is very proficient in such things as thunder and lightning. Just as the thunderbolt fruit entered his stomach, Fisher was able to grasp this power and unleash various attacks at will. Fisher can use all the attacks that Inelo can use in the original book. The 30 million volt thunderbird is no exception. Boom! Exclamation mark. The collision of the frozen fruit and the thundering fruit. The two collided, immediately exploded like a big bang at the beginning of the universe, and the terrifying power was constantly vented to the surroundings. In just a few seconds, the battlefield spread from a hundred meters in radius. It spread to a radius of one thousand meters, and everything in this area was completely destroyed by the force of this terrifying explosion. It was completely different from the confrontation between Okiji and Ace in the battle on the top. The frost quickly spread to the surroundings, and in the blink of an eye, the vision of Kizan and Fisher was isolated. Kizan and Fisher people can't see each other's figure. However, this does not hinder the attack of the two at all. Both of them can clearly see each other's existence. Kizan's knowledgeable domineering, Fisher's roundness. Both sides have the ability to reach each other without a vision. However, at this moment, the corners of Fisher's eyes twitched suddenly, looking at Kuzin in the circle with an unhappy expression on his face. Kuzin, I misunderstood you, you're too despicable. Fisher's voice was low, but it was heard clearly in Kuzin's ears. Hearing Fisher's figure, Kuzin slowly put away the phone bug in his hand, and said flatly, No way, I have to keep you today, but I can't do it with my own strength. 
so I can only ask for support. Saying this, Kuzan didn't feel any embarrassment at all. Among his moves, Ice Q Burst Pheasant Speak is the most powerful single target attack. He just erupted out of anger. He has already tried his best, but with little effect. This let Kuzan know that Fisher's his strength is definitely not weaker than his own, and he can't take down Fisher alone, so Kuzan can only ask for the support of other Lieutenant Generals of the Demon Slaying Order. Anyway, it is impossible for him to let Fisher leave. Once Fisher is allowed to leave, the Navy and the World Government will face a very terrible enemy. After all, the Navy is now carrying out a demon slaying order against O'Hara and Fisher's hometown, carrying out a devastating blow. This guy Fisher looks like he is only in his teens, but he actually has this kind of strength. If he really grows up, then there is still a way for the Navy to survive. So Kizan could only let go of his dignity as a strong man and asked Sarkarsky and the others for support. Moreover, even if he didn't ask for help, based on what happened here, Sarkarsky and the others would not be unresponsive, and they were probably on their way here. Dot, no martial arts. Fisher was silent for a while, then sighed. He originally wanted to continue to compete with Kuzin for a while, to see if his could catch the body of a natural type fruit ability user like domineering, but he didn't expect Kuzin to come up with such a skill. Forget it, since that's the case, I'll leave first, bye. With a casual wave of his hand, Fisher was about to leave here. It's okay to deal with Kizan alone, but Fisher doesn't think he has that kind of ability to deal with the elite lieutenant general of the Navy headquarters of the entire demon slaughter order, let alone a Sarkarsky who is at the same level as Kuzin, so it's better to deal with it first. It's better to slip. Don't even think about running away. Hearing Fisher's words, Kuzin suddenly thought of something, his pupils shrank, he roared loudly, and rushed towards Fisher quickly. He remembered how Fisher appeared here just now. Spatial ability! Exclamation mark. Fisher still has that spatial ability! Exclamation mark. However, it was too late. No matter how fast Kizan was, it could not move faster than the space. After a few steps, Fisher disappeared from Kizan's sight. Damn it! Kizan slammed his fist on the ground angrily. It didn't take long for several elite lieutenant generals of the Navy headquarters to arrive late. Kizan, what happened? Sarkarsky came to Kizan's side and asked with a frown. Being escaped, the Navy will be in trouble in the future. Kizan said angrily. What do you mean? Sakelsky was puzzled when he heard this, but at the next moment, both the elite lieutenant admirals of the Navy headquarters and Kuzin, who rushed over like Sakelsky, changed their expressions drastically. Um. The five of them looked up at the sky at the same time, and their pupils constricted when they looked at the sky. Boom! Exclamation mark. The huge thunder pillar pierces the sky and the earth. Exclamation mark. Chapter 44 Return I'll leave Robin to you, don't leave Robin behind. In a bustling town, in a house, Fisher told Olivia. I see, I won't leave Robin alone this time. Olivia nodded solemnly, assuring seriously. During the reunion and conversation with Robin, Olivia had already looked away. After experiencing the death of her companions and the destruction of Ahara, she can be said to have died once and regained her life. In the past, she lived for historical texts, regardless of everything, and even abandoned her family ties. This time, she has no intention of pursuing these histories after her new life. Now she just wants to be by Robin's side, grow up with Robin, and make up for what she owed Robin over the years. Yeah. Fisher nodded slightly, then looked at Robin. Brother Fisher, are you leaving now? Seeing Fisher looking at him, Robin said sadly. A day has passed since the demon slaying order. Fisher was on the Navy's most wanted list by this time. If only because Fisher was a resident of O'Hara in this world. It wouldn't make Fisher wanted. Although the Navy is acting in accordance with the orders of the world government, it is not so shameless that it still wants others after destroying their hometowns. The wanted Robin in the original book is also because Robin is the only person who can understand the historical text, so the world government wants to see people and dead bodies. Fisher has nothing to do with the scholars in the Tree of Omniscience, nor has he ever been in contact with Olvia, so the Navy cannot arrest Fisher for this reason. Fisher was wanted entirely because Fisher arranged for the Navy before leaving Ahara. One. Fisher placed one on top of Kizan and above O'Hara before leaving, and directly severely damaged the three naval elite lieutenant generals except Kizan and Sarkarsky, so he won the award a copy of the Navy blacklist. As for why Kizan and Sarkarsky were not hit hard, these two are general reserves, and they are much stronger than others. In addition, Fisher will not be domineering. Without the combination of domineering attacks in one, it is naturally impossible to succeed. The other three elite lieutenant generals of the Navy headquarters were not so lucky. Fisher's one was shot with all his strength. With Fisher's strength slightly stronger than Cusin's, it is still possible to attack a few elite lieutenant generals of the Navy headquarters with a surprise attack. And Fisher also took Olvia and Robin to leave the deserted island where the fishing boat was before, and came to a small inhabited island. During this day, Fisher, besides showing favor to Olvia, also told Robin that he was about to leave. So hearing Fisher's confession, Robin immediately understood that Fisher was leaving now. But Robin is not one of those ignorant brats. He didn't respond by crying, just sad. Well, 
I'm leaving in half a day. After I leave, you don't want to waste the power of Inhui, but improve your strength. I don't want us to have no chance to see each other again. Fisher didn't explain too much, but gently reassured, and exhorted. Yeah, brother Fisher, I will work hard to improve my strength, protect my mother, and won't let people from the world government catch us. Hearing this, Robin suppressed his sadness, opened his mouth, and agreed with a forced smile. Fisher nodded and didn't say much. Glancing at Olivia, Fisher said again, don't waste the favor I've given you, and improve your strength. I don't expect you to be able to protect Robin, but don't become Robin's burden either. Olivia is different from Robin. Fisher portrayed her as a favor, but she was not recognized by the system like Robin and became a member of Fisher's faction. Therefore, the faction sign-in of the system was not triggered, and there was no ability feedback. This let Fisher know that Olivia's aptitude is not strong, and her strength improvement is definitely not as good as Robin's. If she doesn't work hard, she will only become a burden to Robin, especially since Olivia is still wanted by the world government. The next life of the two will definitely not be easy, so Fisher should supervise them carefully before leaving. I don't need you to tell me, Olivia reassured with a serious expression. Yeah, Fisher nodded without saying anything else. His eyes shifted to Robin with a gentle smile on his face. Then he contacted the system and started to return. Under the watchful eyes of the two, Fisher was shrouded in white light and then disappeared from the room. Mom, I want to become stronger. I want to meet brother Fisher again. Seeing where Fisher left, Olivia and Robin, mother and daughter, remained silent for a long time. After a long time, Robin spoke with a firm expression. Well, Mom will work hard and won't hold you back. Olivia reached out and stroked Robin's head lightly, smiling. Ah, uh, dot. Hunter x Hunter World, Cryroll Mountain, Zoldic Family Castle, in Fisher's room. A pure white light flashed and Fisher's figure appeared in the room. I'm back. Looking at the familiar bedroom, Fisher whispered to himself. Squeak! Exclamation mark. Raising his hand, Fisher looked at the empty palm, and with a thought, a powerful thunderbolt appeared in the palm of his hand, and the thunder snake overflowed and creaked. The thunderous fruit is indeed the most destructive natural fruit. Just taking it for the first time has greatly increased my strength. My current strength should be comparable to that of Grandpa Gino. Feeling the thunder and lightning in his heart, Fisher murmured to himself. After a while, Fisher waved away the lightning in his hand, and then looked at the smart alarm clock on the bedside table. A week? Has it already been a week? So it seems that the time flow rate of the two worlds is the same. It seems that if there is such a check-in task next time, we must arrange a good time. Otherwise there will be big trouble. Seeing the time on the smart alarm clock, Fisher frowned slightly and muttered to himself. Diddy! Exclamation mark! Diddy! Exclamation mark! At this moment, the mobile phone that Fisher had placed next to the smart alarm clock before he left suddenly vibrated, and an alarm sounded. This surprised Fisher. Damn, it's been a week and I still have electricity. Chapter 45 The Mysterious Realm Formed After Death The mobile phone battery merchants in this world are really conscientious. If this goes to the world of the previous life, those mobile phone battery manufacturers must go bankrupt collectively. Looking at the screen on the mobile phone, which is still 50% charged even after a week, Fisher thought with a strange expression on his face. After that, Fisher didn't delay, and directly answered the phone that was still ringing. Hello, who is it? The strange call displayed on the mobile phone. But Fisher would not think it was a call from a stranger. My phone number is very secretive, only people who have saved the phone number can call in, and at the same time, if the phone number is not saved and still calls in, then it must have an extraordinary origin, and it must be someone who knows me. Sure enough, as soon as the phone was connected, a familiar voice came from the phone. Hey, Mr. Fisher, it's really hard to get in touch with you. Nitero's voice reached Fisher's ears. Nitero? Fisher was a little surprised, but he apologized anyway. Sorry, I left my phone at home after being away for a week. Okay, I don't care if you went out or left your phone at home. Let's get straight to the point. I said before that I would hire you, and I paid the fee. Come to the headquarters of the Hunter Association. Nitero obviously didn't care if Fisher was perfunctory, and directly stated his purpose directly. Is it time to start? I see, I'm leaving now. Fisher was a little surprised, but still agreed. After all, Hunter had agreed to Nitero during the exam before, and the reward was also received. After hanging up the phone, Fisher got up and left the bedroom, came to Dad Silver, and after explaining to Silver, Fisher left the Dry Mountain. On the other side, the headquarters of the Hunter Association, in the President's office. In the President's office at this time, there are other people besides Nitero and Dumian. The third of the twelve earthly branches appears here. Zyujin Middle Dot Freaks, Sishkailu, Yuji Crook. When Nitero made the phone call, the three of them were present the whole time, and they heard the content of the phone call. Aren't you the old man in the past, Jin and Potter White? Why did you change this year? Crook asked a little puzzled, with his hands on the sofa. As soon as these words came out, 
The other two twelve earthly branches also turned their attention to Nitero. Apparently both Jin and Gallo were very concerned about this matter. In the past few years, they have been matched like this. Why did they suddenly change Port Bayi this year? You must know that Port Bayi is a member of the output team and bears a heavy burden. Without the corresponding strength, it is easy to cause some unnecessary troubles. Let me tell you in advance that if something goes wrong this time, you will bear all the responsibilities, President Nitero. Gay Ailu said, I won't be polite to you if something goes wrong old man. Jin also said unceremoniously, ho 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 ho, be safe and don't be impatient. Although the old man is old, his brain hasn't degenerated, so naturally he won't make fun of it. Don't worry, this time I found the most suitable candidate for this operation. Faced with the questioning of the three of Jin, Nitero said with a smile, the most suitable candidate? You mean a powerful and practitioner who cultivates thunder and lightning? Hearing what Nitero said, Jin was taken aback for a moment, and then asked in surprise. They have been looking for an who can use lightning and is very powerful but they did not expect to be found by Nitero this time. Gailu and Crook also cast surprised gazes. They have been looking for a powerful thunder and lightning for several years, and they are about to give up. They didn't expect to find it this year. Ah, uh -huh. his name is Fisher Zoldyk, and he is the next head of the Zoldyk family. He just passed the hunter test this year and is a hunter. Nitero nodded, and then explained to the three. Zoldyk, I didn't expect to be from this family. But it's okay, as long as it works. Kim didn't have any partial views on Zoldyk and didn't mind Fisher's identity. Me too. The same goes for the concubine. Crook and Gailu also expressed their views. I didn't ask you this. Nitero twitched his eyes and said unceremoniously. This old man is just giving you an introduction, not asking for your opinion. Even if you have opinions, the old man will not change the candidate. Hum. Okay, not much to say. Fisher should have already set off. It should take a day to get here from Kukalu Mountain. Gather here tomorrow, and I will introduce you to you then. Nitero waved to the three of them began to chase people away. Seeing this, the three of them didn't stay here, they got up and left. It's really troublesome. If it weren't for the fact that only five people can enter that place at a time, the old man wouldn't have replaced Porter White. A place like a secret realm is full of dangers, and if one more powerful person enters, the strength will increase. Nitero naturally understands this, but the secret realm they are going to enter next is a very special place with a very strange seal. It is said to be a seal, but it is a very powerful posthumous thought, which has not dissipated for hundreds of years. With this after-death thought, only five people can enter this secret realm every month, and if you can't get out after a month, you will be sent out by this powerful after-death thought. If it's just like this, it's okay, if it's just like this, it doesn't make sense for them to treat it like this, they have to go in once a year. But there is still a powerful, immortal monster inside. This monster is sealed inside by them, and they have to enter there every year to re-strengthen the seal, otherwise they will be ran out. The world has wreaked havoc. And Jin, Gailu and Crook are all candidates who must enter and deal with the situation inside. Only he and Port Bay I entered there as combat power. Every year they pick a month when all five of them can make time to go the once a year. Let Fisher enter together this time, and naturally one person will be squeezed out. Between him and Porter White, his strength is naturally stronger, so Porter White can only be replaced. It's really troublesome. I don't know where that monster came from. No matter how I beat it, I can't kill it. It's so annoying. Also, what happened hundreds of years ago? Looking at the steel forest outside the floor to ceiling windows, Nitero touched the stubble that had just grown on his chin, his face hurting. Chapter 46 Nice. In the special airship of the Zoldyk family, Fisher embarked on a journey to the headquarters of the Hunter Association. In the airship training room, Fisher is currently exercising the ability of the thunder fruit he just obtained. Because it already has a strong foundation, Fisher can easily use the power of the thunder fruit. Fisher can easily use all the tricks of Inalo in the original book. However, the power of the thunder fruit has not been fully developed by Fisher. Once fully developed, Fisher is definitely stronger than the Admiral of One Piece World. At this time, Fisher is developing and improving the power of the thunderbolt fruit. After all, everything is not done in one size fits all, and so is the improvement of strength. Even Kripika, because of the relationship between the restriction and oath, has obtained a huge and incomparable Nchi cultivation base. But Kripika still needs to practice Nchi skills. Without these skills, Kripika's cultivation base can only be used two to three times out of ten. And once Kripika has cultivated these techniques to the point of perfection, then his whole body of thought energy cultivation can be regarded as useful. Fisher is like this now. The power of the thundering fruit is very powerful, but Fisher needs to develop it bit by bit. It is good that Fisher has a very strong foundation in thunder and lightning. After obtaining the fruit of thunder and thunder, Fisher can immediately play a level with the General Reserve Navy like Kuzin, but he wants to fully exert his other abilities. Strength needs to continue to be developed. The tricks of Thunderous Fruit roared ferociously in the training room, and the training room was constantly being destroyed. Fortunately, Fisher chose a specially built airship, otherwise, with Fisher's construction method, the crash would have been completely unknown. 
After a day and night of flying, Fisher came to the city where the Hunter Association is located. Picking up the Zolyuk family's chauffeur, Fisher headed to the Hunter Society headquarters. Haven't you arrived yet? In the Hunter Association, in the President's office, Jin sat on the sofa with his hands crossed over his chest, muttering unhappily. His expression gave off a cute contrast to that of an uncle, and it almost turned into a Q version. Unkempt sloppy uncle. What are you in a hurry for? Didn't the president say yesterday that it will be a day later? It's only been a day since we left yesterday. It's still two hours away. Crook glanced at him and said contemptuously. Your memory is really good, you remember all these things. Said Gay Ailu, the snake girl on the other side. At this time, Nitero, the president, completely ignored the three of them. He stood in front of the floor-to-ceiling window with his index finger and thumb intertwined and clasped together, quietly observing several roads in front of the Hunter Association headquarters. Nitero was observing the passing vehicles, as if he wanted to see if Fisher was among the passing vehicles below. Time flew by, and an hour passed quietly as the three and twelve earthly branches of Jin Bickard, and Nitero's unchanging figure finally responded, Ho ho, this kid is finally here. Nitero looked down through the hole in his finger at the car association heading towards the headquarters of the Hunter Association, and laughed. Huh? Is it finally here? The three people who were bickering suddenly stopped bickering with a shock. Yeah, that kid is here. Bin my an man, please go down and bring him up. Nitero retracted his fingers, turned around and sat down on the seat and replied, and then asked the Dumayan man to go down and bring him up. Yes, I understand, President. The Dumayan man responded, and then left the President's office. Soon, the Bin Noodles brought Fisher here. Um, President, are you sure you're not joking? After seeing Fisher, Snake Girl was the first to react frowning and dissatisfied Nitero. From Fisher's appearance, one could tell that he was only about 13 or 14 years old. Under such circumstances, one didn't need to think about it. Fisher's cultivation was not strong, so how could he be worthy of the important task of entering the secret realm? Even if Fisher started practicing at the age of 7 or 8, the training time is only 5 or 6 years. Can this kind of training time really be compared with Potter White? Isn't this putting their safety at risk? Exclamation mark. Although Crook on the side didn't speak, it can be seen from the unhappy expression on his face that Crook also strongly questioned Fisher's existence. On the contrary, Jin, this guy had a flash of surprise after seeing Fisher, and then sat quietly on the sofa, without any intention of getting involved, just watching quietly, as if he was watching. Dot. Hey, Gay Ailu, didn't the old man say to stay calm and not be impatient? Don't be so angry. Faced with the questioning of the snake girl Gay Ailu, Nitero was not angry, and comforted him with a smile. Hey, brat, what are you waiting for? burst out your thoughts, or you will be looked down upon. After comforting Gay Ailu, Nitero shouted at Fisher. But Fisher didn't do what Nitero said, but frowned and asked in puzzlement, so what's going on? This guy Nitero told himself that he was going to enter the secret realm, but he didn't expect to meet three twelve earthly branches as soon as he came here, and one of them seemed to be strongly dissatisfied with his appearance. Ah, uh, just give me some face and show off your strength or these two little girls will tear me apart. Seeing Fisher's lack of face and lack of cooperation, Nitero was slightly embarrassed and smiled dryly. Please. However, Fisher just looked at him like that, not buying it at all. I came here to complete the commission, not to accept doubts. Ha ha, boy, you're fine, I just like your personality. At this moment, Jin, who watched Nitero being deflated twice in a row, laughed, and came to Fisher's side and hugged Fisher's slender body familiarly. Shoulder, patted and said, Crackling! Exclamation mark! Crack! Nitero! Gay Ailu! Crook! Although I don't like Gun very much, I don't like you, the guy who left Gun shortly after he was born and ran all over the world without going back for twelve years. The sloppy uncle who was smoking black smoke, Fisher said lightly. Nice! Gailu and Crook, the snake girl who originally had doubts about Fisher because of his young age, gave Fisher their thumbs together and said in unison. Fisher, Jin, how unpopular you are! Exclamation mark! Chapter 47 Promise So the commission this time is for me to destroy an immortal monster? On the exclusive airship of the Hunter Association, Nitero and others gathered in a tea room. Fisher sat against the wall and frowned. Ah, that's it. Nitero nodded, and replied with certainty. What's the matter, let me come to the monster you can't even kill? Fisher rolled his eyes directly at this. Even now that he has obtained the Thunderbolt fruit and his strength has been greatly improved again, Fisher dare not say that he can defeat the old guy Nitero. How could he be able to kill a guy who couldn't even kill this old man? Fisher thought the old man was amusing himself. That's not the case. That monster is afraid of thunder and lightning, and only a powerful thunder and lightning can destroy it. Crook explained instead of Nitero. From the moment Fisher gave Jin the electric shock just now, Crook acknowledged Fisher, and no longer had any doubts about it. You know, as the twelve earthly branches of the Hunter Association, they are the top existence in Hunter. Like them, even if it is not during the fighting period. The aura around them is very strong, especially this guy Kim. Although he despises this guy, 
Crook has to say that this guy Jin is one of the best among their twelve earthly branches, and his Nianki cultivation is also very strong. Even the mental aura on Jin's body can be broken by Fisher and hit him directly, which can already confirm Fisher's strength. Knowing Fisher's strength, Crook would naturally have no objection to Fisher going to the secret realm with them. Afraid of thunder and lightning? Then just move the generator there. Even with Crook's explanation, Fisher was still puzzled. No, ordinary electric current won't work. Gay Ailu, the snake girl, shook her head and denied. Huh? There is such a thing? Fisher was surprised when he heard this. But then he became interested. Otherwise, why do you think we are looking for a powerful thunder? And just move a generator in. Jin Daiwa, who was hacked by Fisher before, said calmly. There is a posthumous idea in that place, which was left by a senior hundreds of years ago, and the purpose is to prevent ordinary people from entering there. The Nitero interface explained. Read after death. Hearing this word, Fisher narrowed his eyes slightly and murmured in a low voice. Remembrance after death. This is the obsession of the person during their lifetime. The stronger the obsession during life, the higher the probability of activation at that time, and the stronger the power that can be exerted. Fisher knows two after-death thoughts. One is Hisoka, in the battle with the leader of Phantom Troop. Hisoka was calculated by Krillo and died of suffocation, but Hisoka attached a very strong obsession to his own thoughts before death so much so that during Hisoka's time, this thought became an afterthought, resuscitating Hisoka's heart and lungs, and resurrecting Hisoka who died of suffocation. In the chapter on ants, Neferpitu, the Ant King's personal guard, also erupted with a strong obsession before his death. After death, his body still activated the dance thought of Nhaizi, wanting to kill Gun to prevent Gun from harming the Ant King. I didn't expect to hear the existence of after death here. Moreover, it existed hundreds of years ago, and it hasn't dissipated for so many years. It's really a powerful obsession. Moreover, that senior's and cultivation base is also extremely powerful, definitely stronger than the current top five and thinking silently. Fisher murmured inwardly. I see, I will try my best. Looking up at Nitero who was staring at him expectantly, Fisher said lightly. Now that Nitero's payment has been received, Fisher will naturally try his best to complete it. However, it's just doing its best, and if nothing can be done, Fisher will retreat as soon as possible. After all, the monster Nitero was talking about was an immortal monster. Who knows if his ability lightning can work against that monster. Fisher won't lose his life just because of a commission. Oh, I'm a user with the ability of Thunderfruit. That's fine. Thanks. Fisher. Hearing that Fisher agreed, Nitero suddenly smiled and thanked Fisher. To be honest, even if Fisher doesn't agree, Nitero can't help it. Although he paid Fisher 500 million nuns as a reward, and fed Fisher two days of tricks, it was not worth Fisher's own life. You know, entering that secret realm can be said to be a narrow escape. There are all kinds of monsters and weird species inside, even if they enter, they have to be careful, for fear that if they are not careful, they will be attacked by the monsters inside, and the gutter will capsize. If there is nothing I can do, I will just run away. Fisher waved his hand casually, and said directly. Of course, if something special happens, you can leave directly at any time. Nitero nodded and said, yeah. Fisher nodded slightly, then got up and walked towards the door, waving his hands and said, I'm going to rest first, call me when I arrive at my destination. Oh, have a good rest. Nitero also waved his hand in response. Well, the helper I found is not bad. After Fisher left, Nitero looked at the three of Jin with a smile and said, Ah, it's really good. As soon as I came up. I gave me a paralysis physiotherapy. Jin Wenyan, the corners of his eyes twitched, and his face was full of displeasure. Who told you to lose your son for twelve years? This old man wants to beat you up. Will you die if you go back when you have time? Nitero gave Jin a hard look when he heard this. Comma none of your business, old man. What the hell? Hundred forms of Avalakite Zvara, 99th form. FK, old man, you don't talk about martial arts! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Boom! Exclamation mark! Boom! Exclamation mark! Boom! Exclamation mark! Gay Ilu Crook. Chapter 48. Jin's trouble on the forest path. Fisher looked at Jin, who was walking side by side with Nitero in front of him, nudged Crook beside him with his elbow, and asked softly, "Crook, what's wrong with the sky? I was beaten up by the president on the airship yesterday. It's terrible." Crook also leaned over and replied in a low voice. His words were full of gloating. Yes, it's so miserable. The snake girl Gay Ilu also came over and whispered. The three of them gathered together as if they were whispering. Hearing the gloating tone of the two, Fisher's eyes twitched. He knew again how unpopular Jin was. Speaking of which, in the original book, this guy was outraged at the Hunter Association President Election Conference, and was denounced by many hunters, and even started to fight. Coupled with the attitude of the two people around you who are the twelve earthly branches at a glance, it seems that the Hunter Association has really been suffering from Jin for a long time. What are you guys talking about? Convex seemingly aware that someone was speaking ill of him behind his back, Jin turned his head and said with a displeased face. 
What's the matter, dissatisfied? Why don't you practice? Facing the displeased Jin, Fisher didn't pamper him at all, and said indifferently with a faint blue thunder in his hand. Gold. Damn it, I'm so angry. If this kid didn't play a big role later, I really wanted to beat him up. Seeing Fisher's aggressive provocation, Jin became more and more upset. But there is no way, whoever let this secret place be exposed because of me. I have the responsibility to deal with the things here. The secret realm that Fisher and others were going to was actually not a secret realm at first. At the beginning, it was just a very ordinary forest. It wasn't until the appearance of a hunter that this place became a secret place, banned by governments of various countries and listed as a forbidden place. Speaking of this, everyone should know. No way, the hunter who appeared here at the time was Jin. This guy Jin likes to explore and develop all kinds of ruins, and he often goes to various remote places around the world. And this secret realm was entered by Jin by mistake. At that time, this place was very ordinary, because Jin appeared here, discovered the powerful afterlife here, and broke into it out of curiosity. This guy wasn't particularly strong at the time, nor was he known as one of the world's top five n, and he didn't have much preparation, so after entering this place, he was overwhelmed by all kinds of monsters, all kinds of weird plants, and the strange environment. It was tortured to the point of death, and even provoked a terrifying monster inside. However, fortunately, Jin used the afterlife of this secret realm to seal the monster, and then left here in a state of embarrassment. After leaving here, Jin approached Nitero immediately, reported the situation here to Nitero, and deposited a huge commission in the Hunter Association to issue a lifetime commission. As long as the monster inside cannot be dealt with, then you have to enter it once a year to strengthen the seal that seals the monster inside. Every time you enter here to complete this commission, you will be able to get 10 billion ordinances. 4 people, 2.5 billion each. Ha, you said 2.5 billion. When Crook's narration came to this point, Fisher was stunned. Yes, 2.5 billion. If it wasn't for the reward, who would come here to suffer? Although Crook didn't understand Fisher's reaction, he still said truthfully, Old guy frame me. After receiving the confirmation from Crook, Fisher suddenly became angry. What the hell? The old guy Nitero only gave him 500 million ringtones to hire him, that is to say, this old guy got 2 billion yuan. It's so noisy. The previous 500 million was an advance payment. After the completion, the remaining entrustment money can be withdrawn from the funds deposited by Jin in the Hunter Association. Nitero also heard Crook's narration here, fingering ear, turning back with a troubled expression. Is that so? Fisher frowned slightly upon hearing this, then looked at Crook and asked, Ah, that's true. The 500 million is an entrusted advance payment. As long as you accept this entrustment, you can get 500 million precepts, and after completing the task, you can get the remaining 2.5 billion. Crook nodded and said, Hey, then not everyone will be able to get the 500 million nuns. Hearing this, Fisher raised his eyebrows and said with great interest, You think too much. Not everyone can accept this entrustment. You must meet my requirements before you can receive it. Jin, with a bruised nose and a swollen face, turned his head and rolled his eyes at Fisher. That's right, it's useless to come here if you don't meet the requirements, and it's a waste of a time. Fisher nodded and said clearly, Okay, don't interrupt, listen to me continue, the next thing to pay attention to after entering the secret realm. Crook glanced at Jin lightly, and then reminded Fisher, Okay, go ahead. Fisher nodded slightly, then withdrew his attention again, and continued to listen to Crook's description of the situation in the secret realm. Time passed quickly, and Fisher and others arrived at their destination in a blink of an eye. This is the entrance. Looking at the narrow cave entrance in front of him, even though he had heard about it from Crook, Fisher still couldn't believe it. You don't know much. Jin Wenyan looked at Fisher proudly, then put his hands in his pockets and walked over carelessly. The moment Jin entered the cave, a burst of ripples appeared in everyone's sight, and then Jin's body seemed to be swallowed by something, and disappeared without a trace. Space and Fisher, who possessed space magic flashes, saw the mystery at a glance. Ah! Space and Nitero nodded, and then walked over, the ripples appeared again, and Nitero's figure disappeared. Then I'll go in too. The snake girl Gailu greeted, followed behind Nitero and disappeared into Fisher's field of vision. Come in quickly. Crook also greeted, and then followed in. Why does it feel a bit like a secret realm in a fantasy novel? He muttered in a low voice, and Fisher also stepped over and entered it amidst the ripples. Chapter 49 Gailu's ability. It's really insane. After entering the cave, Fisher felt his eyes go dark, and then light up and he appeared in another place. Fisher and others are not in a cave at this time, but a very huge forest. As for why it is huge, have you ever seen a big tree that is more than 10 meters thick and hundreds of meters high? Anyway, Fisher didn't. It would be fine if there is only one tree, but the forests known by Fisher and others are densely packed with such big trees, and it is as if Fisher and others have entered a prehistoric forest. Moreover, in addition, the surrounding flowers and weeds are much taller than Fisher and others. Have you seen the two meter high weeds? Have you ever seen a flower bone that is six or seven meters high? Have you ever seen a mouse bigger than a human body? Um? A rat bigger than a human? Fisher, 
who was meditating inwardly, suddenly twitched. Nima, in front of Fisher and others, there are hundreds of rats bigger than the human body running towards this side, densely packed. Without even thinking about it, Fisher jumped up, preparing to land on a big tree not far away, avoiding the impact of these giant rats. Neat Tero and others did the same thing, they all jumped up at the same time. However, unlike Fisher, Neat Tero and the others jumped directly into the flowers not far away and landed there. Stupid, come here. Fisher, who was just about to land on a branch, suddenly realized that Crook had rushed in front of him at some point, and that huge impact directly flew Fisher towards the flowers below. The two landed on the flower safely. As soon as he landed, Fisher was scolded. Stupid, didn't I just say that you can't act rashly in this place? Besides, I should have said just now that these big trees have unknown toxicity, so you can't settle down at will. Facing Crook's reprimand. Fisher just curled his lips and didn't refute. After all, Crook was doing it for his own good. Just now, Crook could completely ignore him, but he still came here. Fisher appreciated the kindness. Of course, Fisher didn't really forget what Crook just said about this secret realm. Rather, Fisher did it on purpose. Most of the people in the Zoldyck family are invulnerable to all poisons, because they have received special training in poison resistance since they were young, so they have all developed a strong poison resistance. In the original book, Kilua said that poison didn't work for him. When fighting Krillo, Silver, who was attacked by Krillo's knife and poison, also said that there is no problem. Krillo uses a poison with a toxicity of only 0.1 mg to bring down a whale. But after Silver was injured, he just randomly took a hair to contain the bleeding wound, and then continued to fight Krillo like a normal person, completely ignoring the toxicity of the dagger. This is enough to show that the people of the Zoldyck family are resistant to poison. And this is because the people of the Zoldyck family have been exposed to poison since childhood and then use various drugs to remove the poison and make the body develop resistance. Long-term training has given Fisher a very strong resistance to poison. Although Fisher has not been able to compare with Silver in this respect, it is not far behind. Just now, I wanted to be exposed to the unknown toxicity that Crook said, and then let my powerful toxicity antibodies neutralize it, so as to make myself immune to this unknown toxicity and make my toxicity immunity stronger. In the end, it was unexpectedly destroyed by Crook. But Fisher would not be angry because of it. Okay, okay, Crook, don't say any more. The unknown poison here is really troublesome for us, but not for this kid. The head of the Zoldyck family has been professionally trained to be immune to things like poison since he was a child. I guess this kid just wanted to test the toxicity of the surrounding trees. At this time, the three of Nitero also walked over, and Nitero said to Crook, Ah, is that so? Crook's face froze immediately when he heard this, a little embarrassed. You know a lot old man. Fisher looked at Nitero and said meaningfully, it's lucky that you were able to be reprimanded by Crook. Without saying a word, Jin walked over, looked at Fisher and said unexpectedly, as being able to defeat the Nian Chi defense that he usually releases, Jin is very clear that Fisher's strength cannot be compared with Crook's. However, when facing Crook's reprimand, Fisher silently endured it without any intention of refuting it, which puzzled Jin very much. Crook is doing it for my own good, so I won't be ignorant. Fisher rolled his eyes and explained, he is not a rebellious and ungrateful person. Although Crook didn't help him just now, at least Crook wanted to save himself. Crook can tell whether he is kind or malicious towards him. Fisher can still tell the difference, facing someone who treats him well. He won't lose a piece of meat if he has said a few words. Ho 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 ho, my vision is not wrong, your kid's thinking is really different from the others in Zoldyck. Nitero also laughed after hearing Fisher's words. With Fisher taking over the Zoldyck family, the next generation of the Zoldyck family should develop in a better direction. No, no. According to what you said, Grandpa Gino is also different from other people, because he will not get angry because of a few words. Okay, let me do it next. I want to identify the toxicity of this place and see what antidote needs to be made. You help me protect the law. At this time, the snake girl Gay Ilu stood up and said to several people. After speaking, Gay Ilu sat cross-legged on the huge petals, and her body began to emit thoughts, spreading to the surroundings. This is circle. In just a moment. This thought energy has spread hundreds of meters away. Fisher took a look with condensation and found that the circle was still spreading rapidly. In just 10 seconds, Gay Ilu's circle has spread out to a distance of more than 400 meters and close to 500 meters. This surprised Fisher. Gay Ilu is even more terrifying than his grandfather Jinuo in the attainment of round. He can actually cover such a long distance. Judging from his appearance, it seems that he can continue to spread. He really has a specialization in art. However, what is Gailu planning to do when she releases Yuan? Aren't you curious why Gail released Round? Crook, who calmed down his mood and made himself no longer embarrassed, saw Fisher's doubts, and instantly understood what Fisher was wondering about, and left come and say, Hey, Crook, are you being too kind to this kid? At this time, Jin said a little unhappy. Why, don't be nice to this kid, I want to be nice to you, a sloppy uncle. Crook didn't hesitate at all, 
and said loudly, with a rough tone, Fisher, Gay Ilu is a poison hunter, capable of making various poisons and antidotes. As long as you use Nian Chi to touch everything around you, Gay Ilu will be able to understand the various toxic elements around you, analyze them in your heart, and then make an antidote. Nitero walked over, and instead of Crookie was angry with gold. He asked Fisher. Rook explained, Fisher, is it really good for you to expose other people's n like this? Chapter 50 Good Luck, Vitality Tree. Moreover, because of the particularity of this place, the toxicity here changes every year, and the antidote made before will not work, so Gailu needs to come here once a year. At this time, Crook did not continue after bickering with Jin. He walked over and took Nitero's words to explain. Does it change every year? It's really incredible. It seems that this place has a complete biological system that is different from the outside world. Fisher was slightly stunned, and said softly, and then began to observe the surrounding situation. Ah, that's it. Crook nodded, and then began to inspect his surroundings. And Nitero and the others did not continue to speak, and began to be vigilant about the movement around them, so that Gailu would not be affected. During the guard time, Fisher was like a knife in the ass and his eyes were opened. The ecology of this place is better than that of the deep wetland. Fisher was deeply moved by the environment he and others are in now. Since just now, he has seen more than a hundred kinds of strange species. Huge animals, plants that can move, and all too ancient creatures that fly and glide on tall trees. So many different kinds and so different from ordinary creatures that Fisher has only seen in the depths of Wemro wetlands. Have you been to the depths of the wet Mel wetland? Crook, who was not far from him, was quite surprised to hear Fisher's words. Well, I've been there. I practiced there. Fisher nodded without hiding anything, and said truthfully, Ah, are you sure you went there to practice? Crook heard the words, his eyes twitched suddenly, and he asked again uncertainly, Yes, I went there to practice. Fisher continued to nod, fighting there by myself, raising the LV from 4 to 5, greatly improving the strength, isn't it just practice? Crook was speechless now. Even if she entered the place deep in the wet mile wetland, she had to be careful, for she was afraid that if she was not careful, she would lose her life there. Fisher is a good guy. Where is he practicing? I'm really not afraid of death. However, thinking that Fisher is a member of the Zoldyk family, and entering there should be protected by a powerful n, Crook was relieved. Well, what is this? Just as Crook was relieved, Fisher's voice came into her ears again, which made Crook look over. Seeing this, Crook suddenly widened his eyes. I saw that Fisher was holding a huge seed in his hand at this time. Yes, it is a seed, a seed with a volume of one cubic meter. Ho ho, boy, you are so lucky. This is a gift from migrating birds. Neat Tarot on the other side of Fisher also noticed the situation on Fisher's side, and couldn't help laughing. A gift from migrating birds? Fisher was puzzled. Migratory birds. This kind of bird migrates throughout its life, it migrates twelve times a year, once a month, and each migration will bring some things from the vicinity of their residence, and these things will be randomly thrown into the ground during the migration middle. Most of the people who get migratory birds are very lucky. I really didn't expect your luck to be so good. Neat Tarot explained. I don't think it's luck to encounter this kind of thing. It's just me. If someone else drops such a big thing from the sky, it will definitely be a calf. After listening to Nitero's explanation, the corners of Fisher's A's twitched undetectably. This thing fell from the top of a tree, that is, at a height of more than 100 meters. If it fell down like this, ordinary people would definitely be turned into meat paste. Even if they were lucky, they would only get a whole corpse. You're right. However, since records have been recorded, those who receive the gifts of migrating birds are all people, so the situation you said will not happen. Nitero nodded and said, because all the ones that are not recorded are dead. Fisher said directly, Nitero, why is this brat so hot? Why didn't I find out that this kid has the qualifications to be a gangster? Fisher, can you give me the seed in your hand? At this moment, the stunned crook finally came back to his senses, and said in a slightly excited tone, huh? It seems that the seed in your hands, Fisher, has a very extraordinary origin. Crook is a plant hunter, a world-renowned plant expert, it's definitely rare to be able to make Crook so excited. Seeing Crook's reaction, Nitero narrowed his eyes slightly, feeling very grateful. Interested. What kind of seed is this thing? Fisher did not agree, but asked instead. That's the seed of the Vitality Tree. The Vitality Tree is an extinct plant. Its fruit can strengthen the body and make an ordinary person into an athlete in an instant. But this is just the explanation of ordinary people. There is another name for this kind of thing among people, that is, the Nianki tree. The fruit it bears is the Nianki fruit, which can enhance a person's potential energy and enhance his manifest energy. Ordinary people are not newsers, so after eating it, they will only feel that their bodies have become stronger, because they will not control the life energy in their bodies to awaken. And in the eyes of those who un, this is a natural treasure. Crook didn't hide anything and directly said what he knew. I seem to have heard of this plant. It is said that it has been extinct for more than 300 years. After Crook's explanation, Nitero seemed to have some impressions, and he touched the stubble and said unexpectedly, Hey, are these seeds so precious? Then keep it safe. Listening to the conversation between the two, 
Fisher also understood how precious this thing is, squinted slightly and threw it directly into the system space. When I go back, find someone to plant it, and plant it in a garden. Crook, hash, Nitero, zero exclamation mark. If you like this audiobook, subscribe the channel for more videos like this. And join my Patreon if you want to support me, link in the description. Leave some comment and let me know if you guys like this story, or you have a web novel you like and want to hear its audiobook. I will be happy to create them for you. Please like, share, and leave a comment on the video.